It's time for Twig this week in Google. Uh, Mike Elkins joining us from Oaxaca, Mexico. Jeff Jarvis is here from New Jersey. Aunt Pruitt from just down the street. Everybody wants to be Clubhouse. We'll talk about some of the companies that are creating Clubhouse clones. No, it's not a problem that Google collects more telemetry from Android devices than Apple. And then it's okay to Google your symptoms. Why it's not going to make you sicker. It's all coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 605, recorded Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. Sausage Fingers. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by Linode. Simplify your cloud infrastructure and cut your cloud bills in half. Get started on Linode today with $100 in free credit. Text TWIT to 474747 or visit linode.com slash twig and click on the Create Free Account button to get started. And by... The Enterprise Tech 30. The Enterprise Tech 30 is a definitive list of the 30 most promising B2B startups, as determined by over 100 venture capitalists and 20 corporate development teams. Visit EnterpriseTech30.com to see 2021's winners. It's time for Twig This Week at Google, the show where we cover the latest from the verse of the Google and the verse of the Federation of the Fede, of the Fe Facebookies, and I don't know what else we do. Anything we want. That's what we... Hey, it's Aunt Pruitt. Lo and behold, <laughs> Aunt Pruitt's here from Hands On Photography. He's laughing That's at right. me. He knew it was a bow, no, not a prow. I'm laughing with you, sir. He knew, I'm laughing with you. He knew it was a bow, not a prow. I want to give him credit. I got <laughs> I'll explain in a second. Also with us, Jeff Jarvis, the Leonard Tao professor for... Oh, he's reading. Oh, Shh. wow. I have another moral panic book. He's reading Cohen. The Leonard oh, Tao Professor wow. for the Journalistic. The original Moral Panic book. The original Moral Panic book. Look, now we figure out a way to double, level lower third U, so it's a lower half. <laughs> the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig, Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. He <laughs> looks like Kilroy <laughs> with your nose just hanging over the fence there, over your lower third. It's a big nose to hang over. Thank you for being here, Jeff. And uh, Stacy, as we mentioned last week, has the day off, but Mike Elgin has decided... It would be okay to join us in quarantine. He's in the beautiful state of Oaxaca. And, uh, that is right. I mean, for Jeff, moral panic is an academic subject, but for me, I live it every day. Leo. <laughs> He's moral panic the man. <laughs> You're one of the <laughs> calmest people I know, Mike Duncan. You're I one know. of the calmest. You, Aunt Pruitt is calmer than you are. You're a pretty he calm is. fellow. Very yes, we're, we're a calm bunch. I have my moments. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week we talked about the Ever Given, which is now blessedly unstuck from the yep. Suez Canal. It's just Yay. sitting in the lake thinking about whether it wants to go through the rest of the canal. There's a lake in the middle. And it's going, I don't know. Should we go on? What's the point? It was so nice being in the center of the universe and all the attention. Oh. And now nobody wants me anymore. They don't care. So we have a wonderful uh, listener I've known for some time. Captain Sam, she's a merchant, was a merchant a vessel uh, captain and mate for a long time. And uh, she sent me a note saying, You dorks. <laughs> you know, first, <laughs> there was much gnashing of teeth. First, she says, It's bow, not prow. And, and you're right. Uh, uh, I said prow, but, the ba but it's a bulbous bow because it's below the water line. And that's what you, Aunt Pruitt, thought, but you were too polite to say anything. She it's also, okay. she also, so she says, subject is bow, not prow. Imagine the gnashing of teeth. The ship wasn't stuck so long. My ship was stuck over a month in tabletop bay. She sent me the article from 2007. Mm. I wish I didn't watch on delay so I could have put my two cents in with great hyperbole. Okay, it's funny listening to non-mariners make statements about ships. Thank you, Sam. Captain Pirtle. Uh, <laughs> Wait till she hears us talk about Google. <laughs> yeah, we know even less about Google. So there. <laughs> so there. Um, will we talk did about you, Did Google you read today? anything about, about how it was freed in detail? The Guardian had a great story. No. They shifted the uh, Captain um, Sam. I'm sorry if I'm going to mess this up. 
I, you got to come. You up landlubber, you. Number one, they won. of course it was not, it was not, it was the super moon tide which made a big difference. So yeah. it was higher, big time. And when it went out, that created a certain force. They put ballast in the back to force it up. I'm sure I'm the not nose sure bow prow was. up. Yes. Um, and uh, and then and then freed it at the right moment, and it was it was quite amazing. It was, this was no simple. They were they were all kinds of of, of mathematical calculations to figure out how much to shift the ballast and all kinds of things. See, kids, yeah, stay be cool, stay in school, learn your math. Yeah, you might need it someday to free your ship. I just love the fact that there was uh, there was well, I don't love the fact that there was a lot of economic downside, but there are going to be a ton of lawsuits. Oh yeah. Putting putting the Sioux in the Suez Canal. That's the part I like. Oh, <laughs> he was waiting up for that. He had to be on the show this week just wow. for that moment. And you can okay, catch Mike's exactly done right. now. You can catch He's more done. of that great humor in Mike's new Substack. <laughs> MikeElgin.substack.com. So you take a take a prow, Mike Elgin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've always had Elgin's list, but you never charged for it. So you decided maybe it'd be nice to That's make right. some money on it. Well, what I'm doing is um, Mike's list is a, a, a bunch of frivolous uh, tomfoolery. Uh, I basically call it brilliantly bad ideas. It's basically people who are complete geniuses who pour enormous engineering knowledge into some stupid thing. And I just love those kind of stories. And that's what Mike's list has been about mostly. And I've always loved it. You know, some yeah. practical things. Yeah, it's, it's, and, but now what I'm doing is I'm adding an actual opinion column and I'm charging for that. So uh, Mike's List is free. Everything that I've always published for free is still free. And then I, if you want to read the opinion column, you can you can give me money and I will show it to you. So it's right. it's really working great, actually. And in fact, you, you have a whole piece on piloting a tanker through the Suez Canal. Is this a game? Yes. It's a thing I believe CNN uh, organized, but it's it's basically a game. Yeah, you you... Um, the wind changes and you're trying to pilot it. And of course there's inertia. So you get going in some direction and then, you know, you, you realize how hard it is actually yeah, to pilot a, uh, is. a ship. In fact, I think really part of the problem is that ship is just too damn big. <laughs> That's really, yeah. that thing is <laughs> massive. massive. not the word. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So actually there is Substack news. They're raising $65 million. They are probably the king of the paid newsletters. Um, yep. And, you know, there's been, we've talked uh, on previous episodes about some criticism about Substack, the so-called uh, Substack professionals who get paid and like, well, who is it? Because nobody, Substack won't say. Um, nevertheless, I think Substack's, I, why did you choose Substack? There are lots of choices out there now, including review at Twitter. Right. I, I think you you probably know that I used to use uh, MailChimp. Yep. Uh, MailChimp is just has always been really about marketing emails and had become even more so over time. And it was pretty complicated to use. The thing that I like most about Substack, two things I like about it. One is that it's super easy to put together a newsletter. I mean, it's super easy. If you want to reference, for example, a tweet, you just put the link to the tweet in there and it'll show you the whole tweet, the picture, the video, whatever yeah, it like is. That. It'll just throws in there. It's the card. Uh, the the yeah. heading and all, you don't nice. have to do your own formatting. And it's kind of a, standard, right? So everybody's accepted all the standards around Substack, one of which is that when I link from social to one of my posts, it, Substack does the money grubbing business for me. It jumps in there and it's like, hey, you want to pay you, know, right. you want to pay for this? Do you want it for free? And so that has already been accepted. If I try to do that kind of stuff on my own, it feels, you know, it kind of feels like, oh, this guy's always trying to get money from me. But it, because it's a Substack standard, everybody's used to it and expects it it goes down a little bit easier. Yeah. So it's little little things like that that I like about it. It's really, I, I don't really don't want a format or a service or any of that stuff to get in the way. I just want to get my ideas out there in a clear, friendly way and have everything else managed. And they basically do a good job of that. Somebody Spoken like a true content creator. Somebody tenderizing yeah. meat behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What is going this, on? We're, we're downtown Oaxaca, so there's like, you know, there's craftsmen building stuff. And I think I think it's a religious holiday. I think they're they're crucifying somebody as well. So I don't know. Hammering in the nail. I was just looking at Review, which is uh, uh, review dot, get review dot C O R E V U E. This is the new Twitter thing. And, uh, you know, as you're talking, I'm looking at it and they're selling exactly what you just described. The, the, it seems people choose this stuff for the ease of the CMS, how easy it is to, to yes. put content in. 
And then I do, I agree with you. You don't want to be shilling all the time. Let them do the shilling. Right. Yeah. I, I want I want shilling to take place. I just yes. don't want to do it myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you survive. But <laughs> shilling but happens, let me, let me tease, as the bumper sticker let, says. Yes. Right. Let me tease the end of the show, though. So later in the show, I'm going to tell everybody an even easier way to publish oh. a newsletter. All right. Uh, and so stick around because it's it's even easier. It's pretty cool. Yes. I'll be there. There also is, so th so that's one big movement, which is the paid newsletter movement. And then there's the Clubhouse movement. And we have yes. multiple stories this week. Uh, and in fact, I thought Clubhouse had kind of peaked, that it was kind of over. But uh, there are multiple stories about new LinkedIn is going to do a Clubhouse. Spotify is bought something called Locker Room. Locker Room. Which is a live social media audio app. From Betty Labs, which is, by the way, a, a great name for a company. Betty Labs is a great name for a company, but Locker Room is a horrible name for a social network. People are naked in Locker Rooms, yeah. right? And, I mean, and it's like... I, it's, it, and the things they say in Locker Rooms are the kind of things yeah. you, you might say before an appearance. I'd name it the sauna. The sauna. But That's you have good. to consider the, sauna, the origins. Yeah. Well, wasn't it the They're origins finished. of Locker Room based sports. on sports? It was sports. <laughs> but now they're going to go wider, so I hope Spotify... Yep. Names it something else. This is this is my rule that now all social networks do everything that all social networks do. Oh yes, Done. That's all good. do the same thing. You've mentioned <laughs> yes. that before, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Which is why, which is great news for I think Twitter. I mean, um, you know, LinkedIn is having one, et cetera. Everybody's got a, a Clubhouse clone. I think the the company that's going to come out worse in all this is Clubhouse itself. Because people already like their social networks they're on. Think right. about Spaces, for example, Twitter Spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Every social network is going to have a Clubhouse and a Twitter component, roughly, right? Except right. for Clubhouse. Clubhouse is the only one that doesn't have a Twitter. Twitter <laughs> has a Clubhouse, but Clubhouse doesn't have a Twitter. I'm going to argue right? so with you. I disagree with you. I think that do one thing and do one thing well. And so people will go with the thing that is most native to the platform. And in fact, historically, there's some, you know... Twitter's created reels uh, to compete with, uh, just as as you say, Jeff, to compete with uh, um, Snapchat and uh, Instagram's stories fleets. and fleets and reels. Fleets is that what it is? What's reels? That's Instagram. Reels is Instagram's. Um, Do TikTok. you understand my confusion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think you're well, going to go to TikTok if you want to do TikTok. You're going to go to Clubhouse if you want to do Clubhouse. I feel like people will want to use what's native to the medium, not one social network that does it all. Right. But well, there's one with one issue with that though. There, there are. So, uh, Twitter uh, does something really badly, which is that. Uh, it has only 280 characters, right? So right. if people want to express anything that's longer than that, they do Twitter threads, which Ugh. is complete failure. It's Ugg such ugly. a bad kludge. Everybody yeah. hates them and nobody follows them. Whereas with spaces, I think that if somebody has something important to talk about, they want to have a conversation, they can just go directly from a tweet into spaces yeah. and have a longer conversation. Well, you have the advantage of Twitter being a great promotional medium. So it could say, yeah. it's just as you do with your Substack. You say, go to my spaces yeah. and... And talk, Jeff. Uh, do you think that? Because I think Jeff's always been a fan of the thread on Twitter. Will you defend threads? Uh, yeah, I will, Mike. I mean, <laughs> it's, not, Mike. it's I'm not sorry. Google Plus or anything. <laughs> but um, what uh, is? What is? Yeah, I, I think it has the advantage too. That well, one thing I've always wanted. Dave Weiner has talked about this for a long time on his blog. Every paragraph is has a permalink. Yes. Yeah. Right. So in essence, this is the same concept. He could do that because he designed a, the platform. That was a feature bingo. he designed in. Yeah. And and it's very good. Yeah. Um. So so in this sense, a thread means that a thought in the middle is directly linkable. I like that about it. Uh, I can yeah. share just that. Uh, sometimes it takes right. people to get a little a little engine revving to get to their point, or there's something really neat in the middle, or I want to respond to just that point in the middle. So I think that yeah. the uh, you know, threaded uh, forum conversations were a pain. Reply, yeah. reply, 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 right? We never figured out threading there. Twitter hasn't figured right. out threading in the other way, but it added some value to it that has architecturally something that I think does have, have import for other discussions. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. I, I, just, I just think that it's really going to be interesting when Twitter gets spaces in the browser as opposed to just a mobile feature 
Uh, I think that could really uh, kick it in a high gear. And I also think they have the capacity to do higher volume than other ones. But I, I don't think any of these are going to, I don't think social audio is going to be the main way most people do social media at all. So explain spaces to me. Is that I really just got worth it. their effort? Well, is, it, it could is, be. So spa uh, Twitter spaces is basically, they're rapidly building it out. Started out on iOS only. Now it's on Android. Essentially what you do is from the mobile device, if you're a, you know, if you want to launch a space, you basically just uh, hit, you know, start a space. And then the people who follow you can see from their mobile app only, they can't see it from the browser yet, uh, all the right, spaces of the people that they follow. And then you can just tap to join it. Then you do kind of a uh, an audience member, unless you're promoted to a speaker by the- What do you do in there? Right. That, but, but, but what I'm saying is they put this on mobile because the, that's clearly the priority. Uh, everybody's yeah. walking around with those phones in their hands and they cannot put them down for whatever reason, even if it's just to go to the bathroom. So- that's Why right. would they even bother with a browser version of this when mobile is the way to go? Because that's just what people want to do. Well, I think I think that the, the, the there are a ton of people who do use Twitter in the browser and they, you know, spaces doesn't even exist in the browser. I mean, if you're working and you have Twitter, you know, going back and forth to Twitter, of course, I'm talking about journalists. This is what we do uh -huh. all day. Mm -hmm. uh, we're back and forth between doing our actual work and wasting time on Twitter. <laughs> um, you know, that, that's that it's you need to know what who's talking about what you know, on mm -hmm. this other medium, because if it's just the phone people, you know, the, the, the people who primarily use the phones on Twitter is one kind of group of people. And then the people who use a browser or some third party uh, thing or tweet deck or whatever, that's a different type of well, user. Yeah, but I go back and forth. Is, is this well, so do federal? So do does it does it? Yes. When I name it, is, it my, a, is that that's it forever or is it just it for the moment that I do it? Um, it's ephemeral for now, but they've they've made noises to say that they're going to allow you to record them. And essentially, right, but I'm asking something different. A podcast. That's one of the things yeah. with Clubhouse. One of the things with Clubhouse is it is ephemeral. You can't record it. Uh, right. So I think there's a certain freedom people feel with Clubhouse. It's kind of interesting because as a professional broadcaster slash podcaster. I would get very tired of hosting events on my phone. Like, yeah, you mm -hmm. have to hold it. Mm -hmm. I get tired you of listening. Old fart you. Yeah, but I would get very tired. Uh, clearly, it's the most convenient, easiest way to do it. You got a microphone there. You well, just you have a headset. Yeah, you're you're ready to go. But as you, I and I think this is happening already. As people get more serious about it and have regular clubhouses and stuff, they they move to the desktop. They find ways to, yes. you know, uh, yeah. do clubhouses from. So if you started places. a space right now, Leo. What would happen, Mike? I would see it. I would see on my Twitter feed. If people who follow space, me would see it up at the top so, there, right? So at the top there, you'd see you'd see that you know it, it's a terrible interface right now, and I, hopefully they'll fix it. But you see that there's a space, and you see who the host is, and you, by tapping on it, you get the option then to join it or not join it. You so can we do a space of, now? We can't because I, I don't have spaces. So you long press and compose, and you, I don't get the spaces as an option. These are reels, though, right? These circles at it, the top. Fleet puts them up there with fleets. reels, which is a these, terrible. These interface. are these are fleets. Those are fleets. <laughs> these are fleets. So these are fleets. The past so, participle of fart. Yeah. <laughs> it, we, we, know, we know as much about about Twitter as we do about ships, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a bow, <laughs> or is it a prow? So where? So then I see these. I see these. Uh, uh, fleets, where would the club, where would the space be right there. there as it'd well, the but beginning. it'll be a separate be the icon. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, this is now saying, oh, do you want to create one of these? No, I don't. So, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. It, so you, the, the first three icons there, th those would be spaces if people you follow are have current so, live spaces. This is, and this is, you're exactly right. This is why as you keep it's adding horrible. these features, this is why I say, you know, stick to one thing and become the you know, the standard, but as you add these features, now you got to figure out how to jam that in between fleets and yeah. tweets. And yeah. which means they shouldn't, instead of call it spaces, they should call it speeds. But that's another, <laughs> that's another thing for another day. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, and you said you don't care for if, marketing. If you're going to go you. with tweets and fleets, you might as well do speeds. Um, yeah. It, you know, I feel then like then when you do a, a me too thing, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to succeed. Because it feels like it's a me too thing for one thing. But everybody's yeah. doing that, exactly. Yeah, oh, I know. The, it's ridiculous fact, now. Discord just announced 
which is hysterical, that they're going to do Clubhouse-like features, even though, yes. as far as I know, Discord really started this because you could do audio uh, mm -hmm. discords, right? Isn't that just the same? They're calling it stage channels. I guess really it's additional moderation features. Yeah, that, that that's it. what it is, and and I think that this is the thing that Clubhouse has demonstrated is the power of moderation yeah. features. So they've in, in Clubhouse, you can as a moderator, you can invite other moderators who then can promote people, and and there's a there's a good and by the way, on, on, if you get tired of being a moderator, you can hand it off and say, okay, I'm exactly. done, I'm leaving, which means a yeah. room continue on without you having to be the the one and only host. Right, right. There's you know, they you did know a lot of things is, right we, at Clubhouse that they actually were they, very they clever. did, yeah. yeah. They, they absolutely did. The, 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 the thing we learned on Google Plus, because Google Plus, you know, many years ago had uh, uh, Hangouts, right? Back in the day, Hangouts were, was a feature of Google Plus where you could have mm -hmm. video. And what we learned there is what we're going to learn with social audio. There's a minority of people who prefer that medium. And they'll form their own little group, and it'll be like two social networks on one. So, so on you know, the Hangouts people on Google Plus were like, that was a small group of people. It's the same thing with, with the spaces people. The spaces people on Twitter are already this like sort of little group that is not fully integrated with the, the right. larger Twitter social network. And I think that's it forever. You know, I'm talking like 5%, 7%, 10% maybe of, the mm. twi of Twitter users, of LinkedIn users, whatever, will use this feature and everybody else will probably completely ignore it. I do think on Discord it right. might take off because it's essentially something people are already doing. But now, in fact, if you look at it, it looks just like Clubhouse. You have the stage with the speakers. Yeah. You have an audience. You can raise your hand uh, so that you can say, I'd like to speak. And look, you can even, instead of leave quietly, exit quietly. So, <laughs> of course. They, they, of course. They, really, they call that an Irish goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> when I first started using Clubhouse, it was like, leave quietly. I don't understand. Is there a way to leave noisily? Can I slam the door on the way out? To <laughs> hell with all of you. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. But I tell you, you feel you're like you're dead kind of, to me. You're sl just like you slide into somebody's DMs. You're sliding out of their clubhouse. It's like, oh, okay, bye. What is in it for the social media influencers to jump on Clubhouse or or? Spaces? I think it's another platform you can build a following on, right? And yeah, right now, is, are, the way it's working, they usually on look at some way to monetize those. Oh, there's no monetization platforms. right now. Right, yeah. right. That's why. I'm, that's why I, I see. Ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize. I mean, I, I think money. I think I think influencers <laughs> will want to build their brands and stuff like that. But what one of the things we've 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 learned is that really Clubhouse, um, Clubhouse is really for the talkers. Um, there's some people who just love the sound of their own oh, voice man. and yeah. want to go They're on and on. All and on, on Clubhouse. And so th this is one of the. <laughs> yes, and, and well, also they're on Spaces too. Believe me. Um, but but it's it's this is this is one of the you know so I think that the few in the future people will in innovate right now there's not a whole lot of innovation but I think like a one on one comes for example when uh, uh, the information uh, when Clubhouse you know a couple months ago when the information revealed app new details about Apple's upcoming headset or whatever I grabbed the the the, the guy who wrote that thing and I said let's go do a Clubhouse. And, you know, within within a half an hour after that story broke, we were chatting about it it's on Clubhouse. Great. I think that's great. And we didn't let anybody else yeah. talk. That was the key. So right. it was just it was just me grilling him about his story. And then, and then tool. we're done. 30 minutes, we're out. You know, a lot of these spaces go on. I, I did a space. Um, we had MC Hammer and a bunch of other people on, on the space. And, and it's like. I couldn't get out of it. It was, you know, it's eight hours later. I'm still, I'm still the only thing holding it there as the moderator, right? Because if I leave, the whole thing closes, yeah. and right. that's a problem. But I think it, with some innovation and and a little bit of vision, I think some people could really use it to build whatever their brand. If somebody was specializing in, you know, uh, something or other, uh, you get you know, ten or twenty other people listening to you and you know, have small groups. I think there's a there, there's a place for that, but it's never going to be a mass broadcast medium. I don't. If think. I were going to pick a winner, I would say Discourse because a they already have the user base. They're already Ooh. pretty mm -hmm. close to that model, and you could, for instance, tie it to your Twitch stream where you can monetize. Uh, I just think this is a smart thing for Discord to do because they're adding the features that make Clubhouse work to an existing platform that everybody understands. In fact, well, it makes Microsoft me, buys them, and yeah. By the way, apparently that's heating up. At first. We read about it. It was like Discord said, yeah, we, we talked, but we're not talking now. 
apparently there is <laughs> three now that days is later. Up. I think you're going to hear from Amazon <laughs> on this because as uh, they run Twitch. Uh, and I think Discord and Twitch are a very natural partnership, and I think Amazon is going to be in the bidding. Maybe they'll oh. be too cheap to compete with Microsoft. Ten billion is the current uh, amount of money they're bandying around. I like Discord. I really do. I hope, in a way, I hope Microsoft doesn't buy them. And I could see us yeah. Aunt, doing a Clubhouse uh, like uh, on Discord. I wouldn't do it on Clubhouse because it's ephemeral, mm -hmm. and you have to know when it's going to be at the right time and stuff. But I think like having a stage. And doing an event on uh, Clubhouse would be a really naturally... It's kind of like doing this show, you know? It'd be a very natural, easy thing to do. You can... I presume you can record it. If you can't yet, I'm sure you I will be know. able to. Yeah. That's one difference. I mean, Clubhouse really is trying to be ephemeral. You, know, you know, you have to be there. It's, a, it's at the time and place, otherwise... FOMO. Yeah, this, FOMO that's part of it, isn't it? Is the FOMO. Yeah. But I also amused that half of the stories about it uh, include Jason Calacanis and a quarter of them, even yeah. even Scoble pokes, pokes back up. Oh my God, that's a sure yeah. sign that it's a flop. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> it's like really. That's... I haven't seen Scoble in a long time. You, if you, if they mention Gary Vaynerchuk, Robert Scoble, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark Cuban, throw him in there too. He's got his own called yeah. what is a fireside. It was a, a great a great thread I had on the rundown a weeks ago we didn't do, but but a guy did this funny rundown of what's going to happen to uh, Clubhouse. And he just, one of his one of his tweets in the thread, which I loved so much, I could you see Mike, I could point to that particular tweet about how much I loved it. Was Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> found a new place to yell at people? <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he told he told twenty four year olds to move back in at home and sell all their parents' stuff on eBay. And oh, you'll be great! Rich, I tell you, rich. <laughs> That's like soupy sales, <laughs> right? Great. Sell ba baseball cards. Well, I, I, I got a Gary Vaynerchuk story. I went to um, I went to uh, Armenia. Uh, last year, year, year before last must have been, and uh, there was a local tech conference, and I thought, well, I'll just go to this tech conference and see what an <laughs> Armenian tech conference is like. <laughs> Guess who was speaking there? Oh my Gary God, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V. A little later on, uh, Edward Snowden's going to join us for an on-stage on discussion. <laughs> right. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Well, you know what? This is good. This is a shine, the sign that the internet has matured. We now have D-list celebrities on the internet, too. Yes. So, <laughs> yep. oh, God. Very I'm, important. I'm probably one of them, as a matter of fact. Maybe, yeah, maybe, right. maybe E-list. Is D, is D a bit of a promotion for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, there were, did you see this funny Cameo story? I, did I put it in the rundown? Down. Cameo is 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 the pandemic's been very very good to Cameo. Cameo is the place where you go to buy uh, celebrities uh, saying oh, yeah, something. Their little messages, yeah. and stuff. Right? But it's mostly if you look at the Wall Street Journal has a scrolling list. It's mostly it's mostly D lists. In fact, oh, apparently Cameo knows that um, Stephen Galanis, quote in the Wall Street Journal, he's the CEO and co-founder of Cameo, said. My D-list celebrity might be your favorite person in the world. We're tapping into this. The definition oh. of fame has no, it's totally more, it's changed. Camp. It's camp. Wow. It's camp. It's the fact that you can get somebody, you know, oh, my God, they've fallen here, and even I can yeah, get Whatever happened to Scott problem. Rogowski, and you can get him to do a little, yeah. little thing for you. And he, you know, but that, that's the oldest. That's the oldest trick in the book is D-list celebrities that are treated as if they're still mainstream. You know, the Hollywood Squares, Dancing with the Stars, uh, Love well, Boat. And, yeah, Love Boat. I mean, that's it's, what it's, Love Boat was. In fact, yeah. in fact, you should yeah. have a show, Leo, well, uh, that brings on D-list celebrities to talk about technology. Twid. I mean, <laughs> this week in D-list. <laughs> <amazing. laughs> Carrot tops only one hundred fifty bucks. Get him to do a personal wow. thing. I think that's all he made for I gigs. I saw a picture of him, too. So it's now I, I valued. A it's a unicorn. It's now valued at $1 yeah. billion. Dollars. That's the ridiculous wow. thing. I saw a thumbnail of Bo Jackson on there. How in the heck is he considered Bo Jackson? -list? Bo Jackson. Because Bo knows. I mean, one of the greatest athletes of all time. No way that's Oh, so you're saying he should be a A-list. He's not D-list at all. Well... That they're, they're still telling stories of Bo Jackson. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> but uh, see, this is a perfect example to you. He's an he's like this giant. Yeah. yeah, and to the you know in the mainstream culture, it's like you know he's somebody four hundred dollars to get from the to get Bo to say something. So he's at least more of an A list than Carrot Top. <laughs> 
It's three times better than Carrot Top. Three times better Tony than Tony Hawk's Carrot Top. only 250 bucks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Apparently, you can get the That's whole Wu Tang Clan. Really, they're D list? No way. That, this is not just because you're on Cameo doesn't mean you're D list. Three hundred sixty. Well, well, that's how. It, that's how it's presented. At well, that's what that's the that CEO started. said. But let me go to Cameo and see. Let's see who. who let's see. <laughs> it doesn't say. Let's see his here, are, check his here are your D list celebrities for the week. Here it those has been. Doesn't say that. I mean, look, some of these people. Sting is not D list. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. That's Carl, not Sting. Carlton? No, that's wait, that's not Sting from legend. the police. That's Sting, the wrestling legend. <laughs> Paula Abdul. Wow. Well, and some of these, by the way, are donating to charity. So right. Uh, right. let's right. not, right. Well, they do that. Let's not no, diss true. them too much. Some of these. Uh, well, let's go What's see. Wait a minute. Here's a good one. Valuable finds under 150. This is the bargain basement of Cameo. Okay, now, now you're talking. Oh, I see Danny, Danny Trejo. Trejo. I pay for what? him. Wow. Yeah. To do what? Uh, <laughs> to curse you, motivate out. your staff to to work in harder? Spanish. Uh, some of these I don't know who they are. So here's the Gilbert guy who Godfrey. played Batman. That, that's the Gilbert Gottfried is the perfect yeah. cameo. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Gilbert. Happy birthday, oh, <laughs> Andy Andy Dick. Perfect cameo. Yeah. Fran Andy Drescher. Dick, yes. Perfect cameo. I, I think when there's a lightning bolt next to it, they're they're for charity. I think. I don't know. Was that what it is? Uh, I, I can't remember cool. the deal because I remember Penn Gillette was doing it for charity. Oh no! That's lightning great. bolt means twenty-four hour delivery. <laughs> means they ain't got nothing. Oh, to do. they got time. <laughs> <laughs> They're on call. Oh my God! Standing by. Lindsay Lohan. There was a, a whole thing in the call. Sunday Times about celebrities. It, 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 it's a very it's a hard time to be a celebrity because there's no work right now. There's no, no work. Yeah. So they're just hanging out, but it, it's you got to play it right. You got You can't just like you don't want to go on cameo with a lightning bolt. That's a bad. That's, that's yeah, I, yeah. I got nothing to do. I'll You're record some value you. there. Yeah. <laughs> so it was an interesting article. Um, Andrew Dice Clay, John Lovitz. Yeah, these are. What is oh, D list? Give me John mean? Lovitz. You know, <laughs> D list. Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. Acting. <laughs> Acting. I am a thespian. <laughs> um. Yeah. Nadia Comaneci. Sean Spicer. Sean's, but Sean that, Spicer, he's found that is that is yeah, E-list. That's that's yeah. Jerry Springer, but then like Tim Hardaway, he was a great basketballer. He's only Ball seventy bucks. Yeah. Bay Area, yeah, Bay Michael Area Palin, Warriors. Sailor, uh, Michael Cohen, Sarah Palin, Sarah Palin. Wow, I actually think athletes is a, it's an easier designation. If you're not currently playing, if you're done, if you've retired, right. Right, your D list. I mean, actors are still, you know people are still trying to get work. Maybe they're still doing. They're not retired yet. They're just unsuccessful. They just can't get. Yeah, they yeah. have bad agents or whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, this is a, this is this is beneath us to yes. to mock. <laughs> for, apparently not. For <laughs> apparently not. Do you now? Okay, here we are. How many years ago was Google Plus killed? It's been a while. Well, like it, it was a slow, Shiva. painful death. Yeah. But looking back now, given all the things that have happened uh, over the uh, years, all the other social networks that have tried to take its place, I still think Google Plus should have made it. It really was yes. a much better spot than anywhere else that's out there, I think. It, 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 Google Plus circa 2014 yeah. was killer. It was and shut down it, for reels in 2019, but they continued yeah. for a while. On it was a support. shell of its former self yeah. by then. So, no, it was, a, it was a really, really cool thing. It What's not clear is to what extent was it cool for the same reason Clubhouse is cool for the same reason that a lot of newish social networks, when there's a good social network, there's a lot of people who jump to go to it and, and the spammers and all the, you know, various types of people who can ruin a social network haven't discovered it yet. So how much of it was just that part? That's of really it? true. I mean, also, for, for Mike, I think people. that uh, uh, Andreessen Horowitz and company could bring in all of their venture stars into it. And Google didn't really understand celebrity, I don't think. Oh, well, that's a good point. That's what right? jump-started Clubhouse. Was, oh, yeah. You know, you had Zuckerberg in there. 
and, yeah. and Elon Musk in there. And that really made a difference that you could go somewhere Which and listen to. Which is also repellent for some people. But. <laughs> you, could, you know, there's a, there is a certain something to hear an unexpurgated Mark Zuckerberg or an unexpurgated Elon Musk. Every time I'd go in those, it was a deathly dull, though. It wasn't, you know, yeah. you, you were hoping for fireworks. Well, there was a point at which, uh, Leo, you were the top user on Twitter. Yeah, that was right? a long time and then, and, and, yeah. and that, but, but, but see, this is what happens in social networks. It was the same thing with Google+. Plus. You know, in, in the first three or four years, the top people were geeks. Yes. And then the people mm -hmm. with, with, who, have, who have people. Then you know, Ashton the staffs, Kutcher whatever, showed up. That's the, that was right, the turning point at Lady Twitter. Lady Gaga. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've never forgiven it since. I still hold it against him. Whenever I see an Ashton Kutcher movie on TV, I, I flip the channel. <laughs> I don't care. You, you, you hate him more than anybody <laughs> besides Bruce Willis. He's my D-list celebrity. He disowned you like uh, <laughs> I was Queen by, Mary to James II. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Well, he chopped her head off, didn't he? <laughs> the wrong one, but that's yeah, okay. But, yeah, okay. Uh, let's take a little break, come back with uh, actual Google news. We've got Jeff Jarvis. We've got Mike Elgin. We've got Aunt Pruitt. We've got a great panel. Lots more to talk about. And somebody saying the the title of the show it should be and then Ashton Kutcher showed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, make it so. Our show today Thanks, brought to you by Linode. If you're a geek, and I know uh, most of you are, you probably remember uh, when Linode started as the place to do your hosting for uh, online applications uh, as a service or websites or to store media, just a great cloud server. And I remember, boy, I remember what a big deal it was. First of all, Linux hosting, and then they, they said all SSD. And this was very early on, and I was like, wow, this is so cool. And I've been using Linode ever since. L-I-N-O-D-E. I am not alone. Linode has over 800,000 developers who, who choose it. And I think the reasons are really clear. I mean, support is the best. They, they're geeks like us. So they, they, they care. They want to help you. They will not tear you or, or hand you off or say, well, let me send, find out. Let me talk to a supervisor. They can help you right from get-go. And they're there all day long, 24-7, every day of the year. And it doesn't matter what your plan size is. They will treat you like the customer you are. You know, like They will take good care of you. Manage your complex cloud infrastructure with Linode. It believes in cloud computing for all. Simplify it, Linux virtual machines. You can, of course, get dedicated machines as well as shared storage. I'm going to give you $100 credit. You can use it on S3 compatible object storage or managed Kubernetes. You can host your website, build your app, launch and enrich your developer applications, hosted services, websites, AI and machine learning workloads, gaming services, CI, CD environments. It really is you're, you're, you're kind of like do everything server in the cloud. And you can launch and scale very easily with their virtual machines. There are Linode data centers all over the world. And the pricing is simple and consistent. Doesn't matter which one you're using. Choose the data center nearest you. It'll be the same price. And it is the best price performance on the market easily. It's not even close. If you want help or tutorials, Linode has a new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Linode, where you can get security tips, video tutorials, and a lot more. People love Linode. Bryce Adams from Meteoric said, from the start, quote, we were looking for a partner, not a provider. Some of the large providers see us only as a transaction. Linode is the kind of partner that will be us from, with us from the start today and beyond. Multiple Stevie Award winner for their sales and customer service. In fact, third year in a row, they've won. Simplify your infrastructure. Cut your cloud bills in half with Linode's Linux virtual machines. Whether you're developing a personal project or managing larger workloads, you deserve simple, affordable, accessible cloud computing solutions. They invented it. They're still going strong. They're still the best out there. Now, I mentioned free credit. How about $100 in free credit just because you're listening to Twig? All the details at linode.com slash twig, L-I-N-O-D-E, linode.com slash twig. If you're not at your desktop, you can do it from your phone. Just text twit to 474747 that free credit will apply immediately twit to 474747 or go to linode.com/twig and click on the create free account button to get started 
you know I love Linux, and that's why I love Linode. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode, the best cloud hosting from really nice guys. Thank you, Linode. They're saying how much they like uh, they like your background, Mike, in your Oaxaca apartment. It really looks cool. It's beautiful. Yeah, this is a this is a beautiful uh, space. Basically, it's 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 like a walled compound. So there's a big outdoor area with like multiple buildings, oh, nice. and one of which is a is a kitchen. And this kitchen is just like so beautiful. You they, they, really the have the who, digital nomad thing down, man. Yeah, it uh, really do, and it's it, it, I owe it all to Amira because she goes out and meets all these people, makes ah. all these friends, and uh, they're always foodie people. So we just, you know, it's all about who you know, I guess, to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. So in, in this case, when, the, when are the Gastro Nomad Adventures starting up again? <laughs> well, the, the first one is supposed to be for Provence, and we'll see if France can get its yeah. uh, act together. But um, Day of the Dead in Oaxaca, we're only going to do one Day of the Dead. After that, we're never going to do it again. What? Oh, well, now for I Day have of the to Dead. Go. Oh, yeah. So th that one, and so far th we have room for one more couple. But it's uh, the the three couples that we have are all people who have done multiple experiences, so they're all already really good friends of ours. How and fun! So isn't that mm, nice? yeah? But that but that's going to be in October, of course, for Day of the Dead. So. So I, I would say there's a 50-50 chance we'll do Provence in, in late June, and then after that, Prosecco Hills, and then we'll see. It'll be opening up, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I love the Day of the Dead. That's great. Gastronomad.net, yeah. if you want to know more. Just click the Experiences button. Uh, it's all about food and uh, good times. Food, wine, and good times. Yeah. So, so speaking of the, this house, is the house of a friend of ours. The friend happens to be uh, the... Biggest chef. He's the he's the Enrico Alvera of Oaxaca. You're kidding? Oh and wow! No, and he's gonna he's gonna teach an all, all day cooking class during Day of the Dead, even though he owns like four restaurants what? in town. How fun! And uh, he's just he's just a rock star of a chef. And um, anyway, it, it's his friend that hooked us up with this apartment. Oh, yeah, um, but that, that's how I married us. She knows all the foodies everywhere yeah, yeah. we go. So you married well, Mike. I did. I did uh, way above myself. That's <laughs> any of us sure. can hope for. Right? We all did. <laughs> yeah, we all. I was going to say, up. is this the room full of overachievers here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a BS story, but I'm going to report on it. Research we from P Professor Douglas Leith of Trinity College at the University of Dublin, and the headline and I saw it everywhere says Apple and Google devices collect. Uh, data from your phone all the time. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> duh. Um, Apple uh, only a, uh, what was, I mean, this is, uh, I, I found a this story is from the record.media. I don't know what this is. And and this, the Caitlin, uh, Catalan uh, Chimpano found a uh, unique slant on this. Google collects 20 times more telemetry from Android <laughs> devices than Apple from iOS. Still bogus. Still ridiculous. That's why it's so accurate. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, because, well, do you use maps? Do you have location right. services turned on? Every time you join a cell tower, it has to send out uh, the uh, mm. MAC address and the IMEI. And it just, I'm, of course it does. So, Professor Leith, who apparently had no clue that this was happening... During the first 10 minutes of startup, the Pixel handset sends about one megabyte of data to Google, with the iPhone sending about 42 kilobytes of data to Apple. Because Apple already knows more about you. Well, yeah, I mean, when the handsets are sitting idle, the Pixel sends roughly a megabyte of data to Google every 12 hours, compared with the iPhone sending 52 kilobytes to Apple, kilobytes to Apple. Um on, and then the headline others reported was iOS and Android share data on average of every four and a half minutes. Is there, am I, am I wrong to dismiss this or is this just, yeah, duh. Do you surf the web? Are you using the internet? Are you using your phone yeah, it's, at all? It's, 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 it's the demonization of data. Well, also that both Google and Apple said, oh, this is BS. I mean, you, you would think that Apple would go, yeah, see how, how much better we are. But even Apple said, you, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, about the research. Um, you don't know how all this works. Uh, when I saw, you know, the, the, the one little tidbit in the story is that, yes, there's a lot more data. There's a, a lot more actual data, 
in terms of the size of the data, but they said that Apple actually collects a, a larger variety of things. <laughs> so there you go. And it, so my first thought was, yeah, Apple's really good at like streamlining things. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, it's, it, again, it, it's, it's really, th there's, it's, it's, it's important for people to know uh, what's happening. So when you open your settings and you flipping through your settings, get data about what you're doing is being sent back to Apple and or Google, right? When you when when, that, when the phone is just sitting there and it's been sitting on the table for an hour, um, that data is sent back to Apple and Google. It says, "Hey, this phone this phone has been sitting there for an hour." Now there isn't a there isn't a team of people going, "Oh my God, Jeff Jarvis's phone has been sitting on his table for an hour." Um, this is just you know they're they're constantly it logging is. how things work and so on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know that's unrealistic. Well, you would your, never leave you, your phone instance, on the table for now. Do you have email on your smartphone? Well, guess what? When you open the email and your email's there, guess how it got there? It downloaded it from the internet. This is <laughs> if if you had a smartphone and you could make this go away, you just disable. Uh, your broadband connection and disable your cell connection and no data would be transmitted. Or you get a 300 baud modem and you just <laughs> dial in every time you want to connect and otherwise you yeah, won't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, but that's why we it's have a, smartphones is to connect to the network. It's a crap story, but it, I appreciate you bringing this up because people need to know the truth of this matter. Uh, I just recently had a conversation with someone in the family that got a message about an, a particular uh, app having access to their emails and what it was, I'm not going to say what the service was, but it needed to have that access because it was just yes. the way the particular right. app works. That's how it works. And I had to explain to them, look, there's not some kid named Chris sitting there reading every single email that you have. <laughs> it's, that's Because that's how they perceived it. You know, these messages pop up, they perceive it as, yeah. oh, my goodness, the world is the tech world is spying on me. And, yeah, there there is a little bit of that, but not like, oh, I saw that you had um, corned beef hash the other day for dinner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not I actually that. I log everything <laughs> I eat, every single thing I eat in, a, in an app and it gets transmitted. Guess what? It gets, Professor Leith, it's getting transmitted back to the home office. Um, that's how I use it and that's how I want to use it. Anyway, uh, this goes back to moral panic, which yes. Yes. I kind of admit, yes. Jeff, there is a little <laughs> bit of that going on. And, uh, you know, we, I really think people, uh, we really have to think more seriously about what we want technology to do. And, and if you don't want it to do any of those things, that's fine, but then don't complain that it's useful, useless. If you if you want to use it, you're going to be sending data back, uh, and yeah, I don't and know if there's a harm to that, frankly. But it's, it's a perfect transition to 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 a, to a to a really interesting story, which is Google's memory. And I'm sorry if I'm changing the subject. No, Jeff, do please. I'm done with it. What's Google's memory? But, but Google's testing memory, which is a which is an assistant add-on that's currently being dog fooded within Google. But basically, it's a it's a repository associated with its uh, assistant uh, where you can just dump everything. You can say, here are all my meetings. Here's the books I'm reading. Here's the, th so this is the opposite of a moral panic about the data that Google's collecting. This is where you thank you Google. go out of your way to give, give and, and, and what's interesting about this is they don't use the L word at all. They don't say life logging, but that's exactly what this I is. I would do this. this. Life I would too, and this is a you know this is this a, is a diary a on steroids, right? It's uh, yes, exactly because you're keeping it, but it's also keeping information that it, other information. We talked well. about this years and years ago when yes, um, Google uh, Now not, rather than hyper local, it was hyper personal, right? And that it should know your right. schedule, it should know your stuff, it should be able to predict things for you. Um, I think this is interesting right. because it means Google understands that while there are many of us who are upset and say, oh, I don't want, you know, if you go to, I follow a privacy uh, subreddit, <clears throat> privacy tools subreddit, and it, like these people just want to make sure nobody knows anything about what they're doing, which is fine. And and you should have the right yeah, to do that. Power I, to and, you. and you do. And I don't care about knowing anything about them. But I don't, yeah. But I personally want stuff like memory. I want, I want Google to know more about me. So I'm glad. And I suspect, by the way, I suspect the vast majority of users don't really pay attention to this stuff that this is, there's the you know the geeks care maybe or at least they're aware enough to care, but the vast Isn't majority of users much, want the convenience. 
isn't this pretty much right. the premise of Google Now when they brought that out? Yeah, and I was disappointed because they kind of... Oh, I was so sad they got rid of that. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah. really cut it back. They just kill everything. As, yeah. This is a new feature for yes. Assistant. It's, a, according to The Verge, a combination of a to-do list, a notes app, a pocket-like reading list, a Pinterest-style collection board into a single overarching digital locker integrated into the broader, broader Google Assistant app. So it's not it's not out yet. It, as you said, Mike, it's being dog-fooded at Google. Uh, boy, I, I would... I, and they also have Google Stack. That's somewhere in the rundown. I put it in there. What's that I would do? like to see Stack combined with the, memory. So Stack is you take your, 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 your old-fashioned paper. Physical papers, right? And and you put it in there, and it will it will wisely know where to put stuff. Oh, that's a receipt. That's yeah. a business card. That's a this. That's a that. That's that's how um, it should work. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, really, yep. if anything, Google's disappointed us because it, it you know in theory, if you take a picture with Google Photos, it'll know receipts and it'll, it could categorize it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to do what it sh as much of it as it could or should do. Do you think people are scared? It's it's they're scared of the appearance of being over well they will be at some point because somebody you know on some somebody in congress reporter will that would know, that's well, what then, would then make they'll me next sad. say then they'll next say how did they'll put a stories up how to how quit know? memory how did it know how right. to get out <laughs> but and, and that makes problem, me sad though. i would like to i will i will acknowledge your right to insist on privacy more power yep. to you but don't let your adamant uh, search for privacy impinge on my interest in, in giving them more information. That should also be right. possible without right. Google like, being cast like vegans picking on me for eating meat. Yeah, don't pick on me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how it comes <laughs> off. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, the, 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 problem, the problem for Google, though, is that you could categorize people into three camps, right? There's the, there, there's the general public, which doesn't care enough to make any effort to capture this information for their lives. There are the privacy advocates who are somewhat technolo technology oriented, who, who oppose it because it feels like a privacy in, uh, invasion. And then the remainder should be the market for this kind of thing. Unfortunately, those people are all too aware of the fact that Google gives up on things and closes them. Well, that's true. And so you, you wouldn't want to use left. them to life log if they're going to give up in a couple of years. Personally, I am Charlie Brown. I will kick that football again yeah, and again and again as I've done in the past. <laughs> but but most people are not like that. So I, I wonder about the market for this. Mike, I thought of you the other day. I, there was there was a post I wrote some time ago. I can't remember what it was about. But the discussion continued on Google+. Plus. And I had links to the discussion there and all the things we're saying. Of course, it's gone now. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah. just, just, it's, it's one thing we have to do as a society. Uh, I was working on this for the Gutenberg book is decide what to remember. Yeah. And there's a, yeah. there's a great book called, do I have it here? No, that's not it. Uh, there's a great book called, uh, This is Not the End of the Book, in which Umberto Eco and two other people have a dialogue. And Echo says that culture is about deciding what to remember, what to forget. Oh, that's good. Right? Which like novels do we remember? Culture yeah. decides right. that. Yeah. And it's and we need that decision about this because we're losing so much of our of our current heritage because it's, it's all ephemeral. And, yeah. and so what do we choose to keep and not keep with privacy considered, with you know, your own future history considered, with these issues considered, but but there's there's such value. In 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 recognizing what our lives are about, that we're losing so the, in so the, society. Exactly the life logging uh, life logging vision, which was uh, advanced by a whole bunch of people since the fifties, was you would capture everything you read, everything you you know. And Gordon the, Bell you, used to Gordon from, Bell from Microsoft. Jack, yeah, uh, he used to wear a and he was then a Microsoft fellow. We used to wear a ca camera around his neck and it would shoot a picture every se ten seconds or so. And he had the idea yeah. was, and he was inspired that. by the way to do this because his wife Gwen Bell, uh, who died of Alzheimer's, was forgetting everything. And, yes. and he wanted a way to remember everything. Uh, and I, yes. I think that that was inspired. But the problem is, you're, not, I, you're exactly right, Mike. I, I'm not Charlie Brown. I'm not kicking this football. The, the last thing you want to do is, is choose any company's repository for this. I would look for, and I think there are good open source solutions that you can store yourself in a format that you can read even if that dies. You should be looking for things that you do you know, uh, uh, yeah. you know, the people in Emacs lovers use org mode. Um, there are note taking yeah. apps that are very good. 
uh, I, I really fell in love with Rome at RomeResearch.com. But when I realized that it's really hosted on their servers, I started looking for alternatives that are I host. Uh, I'm using a note-taking app called Obsidian now, which does it in Markdown, has many of the same features, is really designed for this kind of life logging, uh, very easy data entry. You can put anything in it, look into but that. you host it, ObsidianMD. Dot com. Well, let me tell you about the last, and to, to emphasize your point, <laughs> uh, the last football I kicked was Google Plus itself. So we were talking about Google yeah. Plus. I actually, I actually used Google Plus as a life logging uh, service. What I did was with Google Plus, you could, you could uh, determine the public or private nature of every post. And so yeah. I was using Google Glass and I was taking pictures of everything. And then I would go through photos and things that I was capturing and about... 60% of them I kept 100% private. I was the only person who could look at them because they were, you know, the th kinds of things I wanted to remember in this linear thing. Remember, search on Google Plus was great. So you could search, what was that thing two years ago? You could search mm -hmm. and find it very easily. And so I actually used Google Plus as a life log. And I think that was fantastic because there are things you want to, you know, to have a single stream where some of it is public, some of it is semi-public, where it's just family members or whatever, and some of it is just private for life logging. You want the, both the public and the private stuff to be in your life log, right? Not just the yeah. private stuff. You want yeah. the public and the private stuff. And so I thought that was pretty good. You know, that was 70% of what I wanted in a life logging app. This is the combination of these two things, and who knows if they'll ever combine them. Probably not. See, but if they did, I would this would be... The, the Google Keep versus the stack that Mr. Jarvis brought up a second ago, it, it seems like those two could pretty much be one and the same, right? It, yeah, you can this memory of the documents yeah, sounds like Keep, like yeah. So this is yeah. what I'm using, and this is what I would use, which is something that is going to be... This is an open source, but the format it saves everything in is Markdown, so you, you can always use another tool... Um, it does what it does is, which is cool, is a knowledge is a map like this. Oh, it does dude. internal linking, so it's very easy to create a backlink just by putting it in, in bra brackets. It's a just like that. This is becomes a link. Uh, I think it's really, really good. There are lots of community plugins, very active community. It's Obsidian.md. I've been looking. I haven't, you know, I've been looking for the right way to do this, and I think you need to host the data. The data needs to be in a format that can be read even if the app mm -hmm. disappears. I'd prefer it were, if it were closed source, I mean open source, but still, it is Windows, Mac, Linux, um, and it's going to go on iOS and Android soon. So this is, uh, to I me, think, this is a I good I think the opportunity for project. this sort of thing is in augmented reality. So the, the key is not the capturing of data. That's actually relatively easy. It's how you look at Mapping it. Mapping it and all that stuff yeah. is a little bit harder. And yeah. then the ability to quickly recover what you're looking for is the really hard part. So I would love to see some something like this that's open source that you control the data, but which could be conjured up with your eyeglasses while you're walking around. Uh, well, you, you know, got to start by recording it, I think, and then it's just a matter of the, the, the interface to your glasses. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, a simple, a, the simple thing that they used to talk about with Google Glass, which is you know, an app that recognizes people and right. tells you previous interactions right. and you know, where does it get that who information else you from? both know if you haven't been storing exactly. that it's not going to know that's right so that's right. maybe memory maybe google's memory is a precursor to something like that apple's needs to do it they're the ones that are gonna, probably going to do ar glasses right. before anybody at this point well, yeah. it's also not just for your own stuff i mean watching the <clears throat> tragedy of the george floyd Derek chauvin trial the last few days have been um about the video evidence and it's people, thank goodness, and yeah. bravely had the reflex to record and 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 share. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have this case. Otherwise, we'd, we'd wouldn't it be so different. Lost. And you've made that uh, point yeah. before that with uh, she posted it, the video first on Facebook, uh, and had it not uh, uh, achieved wide notoriety almost instantly, we probably never would have heard about it, and there'd right. be no trial going on right now. So I agree with you, Jeff. This is. You know, you can't get away with anything now, though. There's cameras out everywhere recording right. everything. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Today, they they had a, on a lieutenant from the police force. They have more than 200 cameras around, and that's how the um, dispatcher saw something strange was going on there and tried to call in. And there oh, are all these efforts. It's it's phenomenal. It's just it's, I know it's not what the show's about, but 
the, the utter tragedy of the young people who were bystanders or involved, the cashier in the store. They were so Who upset. feel remorse yeah, and, yeah. and wish they could have done more and were stopped from doing more yeah. uh, is amazing. Uh, but, but part of what they did was to document, to witness well, and, 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 and imagine their frustration. They were. They. Uh, what's becoming clear as you watch the trial is, they were eyewitnesses to a murder. Oh yes. And everybody they agrees. Knew they the knew it. Everybody agreed. They couldn't stop it. There was nothing they could do about it. Thank God they were able to record it. Um, and now we know they were eyewitnesses to a murder. I mean, it's just it, it's just no question about it. But otherwise, it would have been you know, and it's happened so many times before. It would have just. You know, life there's an element of empathy. Oh, there is question uh, that, about it, sir. <laughs> there yeah. is question nope. about it. Like question about what? Uh, if this was actual murder or not? That's why they. That's why there's a defense for this person. Oh, uh, Aunt, you're being very uh, <laughs> judicious and smart and journalistic, and you're right. He's uh, accused, but I have to say. We all know it was a murder. <laughs> Come on. Well, the, the, the other thing, I mean, I, to me, one of the most fascinating things that happened last year was that th this type of video evidence has changed a longstanding thing. Black Americans have been telling everybody for decades. And nobody believed them. That yep. when they get stopped by the police, it's a whole yep. different ball of yep. wax. And, you know, I think just about everybody else was kind of like, yeah, you're exaggerating. That's, yeah. the, you know, it's probably C, blah, 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 et cetera. And then all of a sudden, we had access to all this video and everybody was like, oh, my God, that's just, you know, because we've all been pulled over the, by the police. It's, you know, everybody's polite. It's very nice. It's blah, 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 blah. And so the the the, the ability for these kinds of technologies to 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 offer up empathy for people who live a different experience than you uh, than you live. Uh, no matter who you are. Huge. It's enormous. It's enormous. And, and that, 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 that was a. Amin Ra in the chat was pointing out it started with Rodney King. I mean, this goes right. back to the camcorder, right? Somebody had a, yes. right, exactly. a camcorder, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have known that story. There wouldn't have been riots. Uh, none of that would have come out uh, yeah. if if it weren't for that camcorder. So we uh, it's a new era because of that. And you also go to this. Yeah. There are a lot of, in Europe and elsewhere. There's a there's a presumption of privacy in public. If if that were a doctrine, then all of the things that were taken. Would have been well. I know. I know. Says the perpetrator. I. I don't consent to this. Uh, I. I demand my privacy in public, uh, or any one person in a group does. That. That. We all own what occurs in the public. It is the public's. Right. Well, and also, also what occurs in semi-private. I think one of the first cases around this was that some kid years and years ago was arrested for something or other. Uh, and he was interrogated. And, and when you're in an interrogation situation, the police have the uh, control over whether it's recorded or not recorded. So they interrogated this kid. They basically tried to blackmail him or did some some shady thing uh, to him. Uh, and they went to court and he was looking guilty as sin. And then the and, but it turns out that he had a he had a, a music player. This is years and years ago. He had some MP3 player that had a recording function he recorded the entire interrogation wow and, and so they just simply played the recording demonstrating that the police had completely lied and in fact had abused him in the interrogation room in the way that they had claimed the police officer he went free that the cop went to prison and so this is a case where in a situation where normally one side can control the recording and the other side cannot he surreptitiously had his own recording that he controlled and the truth was revealed but we're seeing a lot more of that with there's still many many cases where that is not the case where every time there's new technology that can record what's happening the powers to be the you know the police the government or whoever it is tries to use that new technology to gain an advantage over the, over others and so we have to keep fighting for our right to surveil they're surveillers, right? And and it's 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 not going to be easy, but I think a lot more of those fights are are coming. Yeah. If you've ever wondered if it's a bad thing or a good thing to Google your symptoms, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bad thing to read about symptoms before you have them because you will get them then. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So I'm not talking about that. (laughs) It is amazing, right? (laughs) You never read medical books. You will come down with every illness. Uh, But there's been a study conducted at the Brigham and Women's Hospital at uh, Harvard found that people were more likely to accurately diagnose a loved one's sickness after searching for symptoms online. Now, admittedly, that's compared to when they did no research. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. I think you have sausage finger disease. <laughs> uh, but in other words, yeah. uh, the the author of the study, who is an internist at Brigham and Women's Hospital, said, "Our work suggests it's okay to tell your patients to Google it." That's good news. As long as they're not also using the internet to get the uh, the prescription, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the other part of it too is they found that it did not. Uh, the, pr- the, the presumption would have been you shouldn't do it and it will increase your anxiety. Right. It appears it doesn't increase the anxiety. Now, right. the study does say that this was about the, the, the hypotheticals the, 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 the subjects were given where someone in your family has these symptoms. Right. Now, go look up on Google not and you. come back with yeah. Um, yeah. the diagnosis and see approach. if it's better than the one you just presumed. It's if it's for you. Approach with that. Yeah, it might be different. Like, I got it. I know I have it. I, of course mm-hmm. I do. Um, ah, mom, you know, she, she complains. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, well, it's, it's not. where is this? Where is reliable? Is WebMD? I always go to WebMD. I feel like uh, that would be no. Yeah. No? Mm-hmm. no? Really? Mm-hmm. Where do you go, Ann, if you want to know why you have sausage fingers? Well, fortunately, I I can pick up this here Telio phone and dial a eight six four number because I know a physician. Um, Call a doctor. And, and said physician is a friend of mine, and said physician has said himself that yeah, WebMD can be a total oh that's that's good to know. Mess. Mayo, I think, the, is pretty. The, good. The Mayo problem, Clinic. Okay. Mayo, is Mayo okay. Clinic is good. The problem with yeah. WebMD is that they will list. First of all, they're super conservative about everything. And, right. and it's all about directing you to go to a doctor and get an actual evaluation. Fear-based. But they, they'll give you literally every single possible possible yeah. thing. And they don't really do a great job of helping weigh the likelihood of any of those. So, you know, they give you 30 possible reasons why you have sausage finger. And you're like, well, you know, you're left kind of like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, one of them. I, yeah, they've been, they're the original, aren't they? Didn't, weren't they? The, yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1998 or 96 they were founded so they've been around a long long time um okay good i'll 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 use mayo from now on i used to have a book the mayo family health book or something like that that was remember books before the internet that's that's like a that's like a website made made out of trees out of trees dead tree website (laughs) they're not going away even i will admit they're not going away I can't in my books. I you know should be updated. I asked my I was telling my mom about a book that I'd read and I said, Oh, you would love this. I said, Do you still read books? She said, Are you kidding? I love books. Yeah. This is by the one good thing. I I know I shouldn't use Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. But I love it that I can go to Amazon and the next day the book will arrive at her door. I just think that's really the other I gotta tell another alternative that I love is Blackwell's. Oh yeah. I should which start. is a British publisher, and you can get books that are out in Britain before here, oh. and they discount them like Amazon and uh, uh, free shipping too. It's competitive with nice. Amazon, even for books that aren't released here yet. Okay. So, so let me give you a book por- pornography story. Um, <laughs> Wait, no, not pornography book. <laughs> well, Representative <laughs> Gates, I'm not sure we want to hear this. Hey, she was 18. Listen, uh, um, so so I, I of course I love 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 actual physical paper books, love them, but I can't own them because I travel so much. So I have a Kindle have and no I have shelves. electronic books and so on. Right. Exactly. So we, I, you know, I loaded up my Kindle before this trip. Uh, we rolled on into this house, went into the bedroom and lo and behold, the bedroom is an effing library oh, of physical wow. books because the guy who owns this house had a bookstore in Oaxaca, uh, an English language bookstore Wow, and it was because cool. of a dispute with the with the person he was leasing the space from. He closed the bookstore and moved all the books into his bedroom. So you actually have a you know, bookstore in that house. Wow, and there's a bookstore in the bedroom <laughs> where I'm sleeping every night, and it's all like history of Mexico. Oh, it's like you know it. uh, wow. food. Uh, you know, this place food. you're staying at. I mean, it looks so cool. Wow, now I like it's it even beautiful. more. It's beautiful. 
Yeah. Uh, hey, you want to see the kitchen? Yeah. Let's yeah. See. check this out. Let's see. Oh, man. It's making me hungry. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at the Lord. tile above the stove. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's all the art on the walls. Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And and so, anyway, I was I was so thrilled. I'm like, I threw my, I haven't even seen my Kindle since the day we got here. And I've been just like going through these Paper. books. And it's just Dead heaven. Trees. They smell good, yeah. too. They have a kind of musty, fusty smell. I you love could, it. You could, they're, they're, I, I actually, there's an academic paper I downloaded that analyzed the smell of, of, of books. What is it? Don't tell me. And, is it bad? Um, well, it's, it's common. It's, it's boring. It's a whole bunch of chemicals and stuff. But it, you know, the, the combination of the paper and a little bit of mold and the dust yeah. and the leather and, yeah. the, and yeah. the wooden shelves. It's and a how, nice how smell, how though, isn't it? It's, yeah. I guess it's the associations rather than uh, the actual smell. It's the associations. I never liked reading, yeah, yeah. I never liked reading books. I, I, I just never could get into it for pleasure um, and barely read when I had to for school. I absolutely hated it. Oh, I feel it. bad for uh, you. Now I know you don't like no, chemistry because you blew the I, place I love, up. And you, <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> You've been looking at the Twit community. Yeah, now. yeah, the Twit forums. <laughs> and explain why he's not a fan of science. It was cute. It was great. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I did enjoy and do enjoy reading instructional books, you know, if – how to do so and so i'll read that in a minute for some reason but i never quite got into oh. reading for just leisure but i feel that's bad why for I'm you glad man. to have audible and audio yeah now well, oh, okay. i'm hooked on that so you but, do look, okay. picking up the book i don't care to do that no that's fine i can't read anymore because my eyesight's not that good and, I, and as soon as i open the book i fall asleep on the page but yeah there's that <laughs> but audiobooks uh man i just i i just love them i love them uh, although I've been doing more Kindle of late, I have to say. Google and T-Mobile, I saw this yesterday on All About Android. Mm -hmm. Google and T-Mobile announcing a big partnership. Uh, the carrier has agreed to showcase a suite of Google services on Android phones they sell, uh, including, and this is what's really interesting, Android Messages. It will now be the default message app on all T-Mobile phones. They're also, they've gave, given up on their TV service, which they've been slowly phasing out anyway, in favor of YouTube TV. Google One will now be the default backup service on T-Mobile Android phones. And uh, they're going to start selling the Pixel, which is very good news. Because honestly, one of the reasons the Pixel has become less and less interesting is because nobody was selling it uh, except Google. I think having it in a carrier store makes a huge difference. And motivates I them don't to know about that. I remember room. reading that and was thinking, hey, that's great news. But then I thought um, people still don't want to buy it because they, they don't really have a, a compelling reason. It's not the hotness that the Samsung I think so. People go into the, the, if it's not in the phone store, it's out of sight, out of mind. So I agree mm. with you. And, and some yeah, unless you're a geek. To some, to some degree, it also depends on the people in the store saying, oh, you should look at this. Because most people go True. to the phone store. And they don't, you know, they don't have uh, in, in mind. You and I might say, I'm, "I want to see the Samsung uh, Galaxy S21, please." But I think a lot of them go, "Okay, I, I don't know, what should I get?" So I think having the Pixel in there is is. I remember a good thing for the, Pixel. Um, the last time I went to a physical phone store, and it was I was going to get the Pixel 2 XL, and I remember walking in the store and. They had that whole, you need to make an appointment bull crap going on. I'm like, I, I just want to give you yeah, some money yeah. and go on about Wasn't my that business. A you know, <laughs> like, I just want to give you money and go on about my business. So I waited 10 minutes and then somebody came to see me and I said, I want to get a new phone. And the first thing got their mouth is, hey, we, yeah, we got the new note, blah, 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 blah. Uh, didn't even think about the pixel that was right there next to it. It's, oh. you know. And I knew, I was curious to see what was going to happen, but I knew I was there to get the Pixel 2 XL. But I was just curious to see what was going to be said. If you are a YouTube TV subscriber, as I am, Lisa saw the bill the other day and she said, what's this $65? I said, mm. yeah, that's what it costs now. She said, let's cancel that till football season. But uh, That's what you, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you will get Don't you have cable? Yeah, I have cable, but the reason we have it is because Lisa wants to come to work and watch the football game. So, ah, yeah, it's nice because you can and you can use the DVR and stuff. Honestly, 
the more I use it, the more likely I am to, to cancel my cable uh, because I think it's as good as cable. $10 off if you're a T-Mobile customer. The other thing that makes this interesting news is the fact that uh, Android Messenger will be the default messenger. And now that means RCS. RCS. Yes, the rich communication finally. services will be finally, at least widely used among T-Mobile customers. Um, it might be, I hope it's just enough to get RCS over the top. RCS gives Android users kind of a parody with Apple's messages. The problem with Apple messages is it's only on Apple devices. I, I guess yeah. that's why people turn to WhatsApp and, and the like. Um, I wish we had that's a That's why Hardhead left Android and went to yeah. iPhone. Yeah, because his friends had iPhones. And he, was yeah. a, uh, he didn't like being a green bubble. <clears throat> That's it. You know, th that, yes, is, that is the most genius bit of dark uh, patterns uh, design. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Because I, you know, I, I, for a long time, I had an Android phone and I was like, I had the dreaded like green, you know, stigmatization and it's awful. <laughs> yeah. It just, it really motivates you to, to like want to get an iPhone. And, and speaking of the Pixel, um, there's one feature of the Pixel that I had to keep my Pixel for, even though I moved to iPhone I don't know, about a year ago. And that is the ability for it to take photos when people smile and all that kind of stuff. It's built in the AI that oh, the basically AI. decides. Because, because when we do uh, experiences, we do various things that, you know, I'm involved, I'm doing it. So I'll just mount the phone with a tripod somewhere and just leave it there you for did like that three one, hours. La you were in you studio know? more than a year ago, obviously. Yes. And yeah. you did that. Yeah. My such very cool first time in Twitch studios on the big show. Mr. Yeah. Elgin was there, yeah. and that's what yeah. he did. He put that camera. It was so yeah. cool. It's so easy and it's so high quality that, you know, so, you know, a lot of times I'm hanging out with people who are, you know, you know, they don't smile that often, right? Right. And so it's it's like magical to to set up a thing, hang out with a bunch of people for three hours, and that person who never smiles, you get like 20 pictures of them smiling. Isn't that great? It's right. so great. Right. It's so great. But Apple that's fine that on us, Mr. More. Elgin. We can't let Google do that. <laughs> Google yeah. knows you're smiling. <laughs> I still, am, I still have a conundrum because I use Hangouts still. I know this is I'm hanging by a thread because I want to. hanging out by a thread. Yeah, because <laughs> it works on Android and iOS, so it is a cross-platform messaging. So I have on my Pixel Hangouts is my default text messaging. But I know it's just a matter of time, and then I guess I'll have to yeah. use Android Messages, but then I don't know what I'm going to do on iOS. So there, there needs to, I, and Telegram. I, well, I love Telegram, but but nobody in my family uses it, and right. I don't think you right. can make Telegram your default SMS program. I should look. It's, I haven't I haven't checked in a while. There's a limit to uh, there's a for, and this I don't know who's responsible for this. Uh, is it Google? Is it is it is it Telegram? But when you uh, look at your default apps, let me just go to my default apps and see what choices I have for um, for messages. Yeah, it's signals in there, but not telling. You know, I don't know why. Signal is a perfect example. Signal is fantastic. And again, if you use it, nobody else you know uses it. So there you are by yourself using Signal. Yep. It's like, pointless. But you know, this this is one of the frustrating things about Google. That's probably secondary only to the fact that they close everything once you've invested in it, that they are the perfect company to have the universal messaging platform that everybody uses. If Google said, you know what, we're going to use Google Messenger, and there's only one thing that this company makes that lets you communicate via all these you know, different ways, and we're going to support it forever, and it's going to have every feature. It's going to be like WeChat or WhatsApp or whatever. It's going to have all the features, and it's going to be on all the platforms everyone would use it. But no, they have all these different platforms. Nobody knows what's going on with Hangouts. Nobody know, nobody um, frustrating. believes that they're going to they're gonna stick with any one thing. I did a, an article uh, maybe two years ago about, I think, I think they had 13 communications platforms. And by the time the article was published, they had a different number. I mean, it was just, they're, they're always changing. <laughs> mm. Nobody knows That's what's so going on. Nobody, even, even geeks, even the people who listen to this show or even people who, who, who appear on this show couldn't literally name all of their messaging platforms and where they are and what they do and all that kind of stuff. Nobody knows. It's such a lost opportunity for Google. You know, you saying this, uh, 
I would assume that the, the leadership at Google would know those same facts. They would know that, hey, we got this. Yes, we so had what's Allo, the story? We had yes. this messaging. We yes. had blah, 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 blah. Why aren't they, as leaders, saying, you know what, we need to fix our crap and, and, and get things more focused uh, to where we can offer a product to the masses that could be strong and used by everybody pretty regularly and just and keep it rolling? Why isn't you, you, Pachai? I, and, and I, I know the reason. You said it. You said the P word. Nobody says this, and I'm the only one who says this, but Sundar Pichai is a horrible CEO. He has oh, zero right. vision. And basically, Google is Lord of the Flies. Everybody in Google is doing their own thing, and there's no visionary leadership to get, cool. every, get everybody you in lockstep. Like this is the beauty of Apple. That, that the tone was set by Steve Jobs. This is why Apple has one thing. You know what, what Apple's messaging platform is. Everybody knows what it is. There's one thing you know they're never going to abandon it. And, right. and, and Google is the opposite of that. They, every different division and group and so on has their own thing going on. And Sundar Pachai doesn't have the leadership to, 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 to bring it all into one. And so it's, it's, it's a mess. And it's probably going to remain that way. And maybe it's because the shareholders are like, eh, we care less. Our money is coming from elsewhere, not because of these apps. Is that the case? Because there's no real push there. Is it? I don't know. It, I mean, if it, everybody wants to be WeChat, right? In China, right? WeChat, that's the Chinese uh, uh, yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. In China, you can't take the train. You can't like do anything without WeChat. This is the, this is the wet dream of every Silicon Valley executive because it's a, it's a e-commerce platform. It's a social it's network. Also, it's everything. You, you become the default when the government decides you're the default too. So absolutely. Yes. No, absolutely. But the, the, the company that, you know, Facebook, the, Facebook's entire thing about buying and integrating the messaging for Instagram and, 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 and Facebook Messenger and all these different platforms into one unit is because their goal is to become the WeChat of the non-Chinese world. But really imagine if Google had that goal. If Google had the goal of having a single platform that everybody used for everything, that would be extremely lucra lucrative for Google as a company. They just don't have the culture that would make that happen. That, that's the that's the problem or the leadership or the vision or any anything else. I mean, I, I actually think that like uh, the, the, the if the founders, if Larry and Sergey came back to Google and actually ran the company again, I think they could make it happen if they intended to. But they're they're off playing with their money. And uh, well, see, I don't even know about that, Mr. Elgin, because while they were there, this problem existed. Everything it's only gotten sort of, worse, though. Yeah. You'd think sure. when they when they Is handed it, over the reins to. Pachai, he could have said, let's fix this. But you're right, it's only gotten worse. Is it? I'm not trying yeah. to... We blame, blame Ruth Morgan, Porat. Porat. I know where you're going to say. Yeah, we blame the CFO. But he could... But that's... She works for him. She right? works for him, yeah. So I don't I don't think that's fair. Yeah. I'm sure that... Uh, you know, I, I've never heard anybody say this, Mike, but as soon as you say it, I have to say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You're right. I mean, this is this is the this is this is why Steve Jobs is the most successful technology leader. I'll that give you will an example exist, because he was a fascist. There was there is one company where the founder's gone, uh, and they brought in a new CEO about five years ago, and he has completely changed. Don't, the don't company. tell me you're gonna. No, you're not gonna say Nadella. Right? Yeah, not Microsoft. Uh, Nadella. Ugh. But, okay, yeah, but, because that company because is totally different since he's been in place, and it's Nadella, a good okay, thing. But, but, but the, it's but the, the reason is that company. Steve, it's the company that Steve is throwing Ballmer the internet overboard. Was terrible, but he, Bill Gates was the Steve Jobs. He was just no. as ruthless and horrible. And but Bill evil. Gates never invented anything himself. He only copied others and made it more successful, which was good business. Well, I, I admit he was but, a different person, but he was a cutthroat manager. <laughs> <laughs> he was a cutthroat manager and uh, did very well for the company. Bomber was terrible. Everybody yeah. knows. And, and now the problem I have with Microsoft is that is that they are, um, they, as I've said it on, the, on the last three shows, they're the Eddie Haskell of, of tech companies. Uh, Google it if you're too young. Uh, and um, <laughs> they're throwing the internet overboard, right? They, well, that's they align with late. Murdoch in Australia. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're saying redo two thirty. They're they're siding with the newspapers against Google and Facebook. They're the jerk company, and they've always been the jerk company, and they're still the jerk company. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. Problem. At least in that in that regard, the not impressive. But I have to say, in every other regard, what Nadella has done with Microsoft is spot on, and his vision. Skype. The, Skype. And it, well, Skype's. But he's going to fold Skype into Teams. Skype yeah, is he, going he's got away. his foot on the throat of Skype. He right could have been now. Zoom. <laughs> right now they're focusing on Team and Azure Teams and maybe all the other enterprising Zoom, stuff that's making them money. Yeah, well, that's their future. Yeah. That's where they're going. Uh, that's look, also I'm not a fan of Windows. Set. Yeah, it's their skill set. They're, 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 I think, of all the companies out there, even better than Google, who really should understand this, realize that the future is in the cloud. And they are really right. positioning themselves to be the, the cloud backbone well, Amazon for business. Really Amazon knows that. it, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Am and, and Microsoft doesn't compete at that level. But on the other hand, Microsoft is more trusted in enterprise than Amazon is. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, just as an example, we talked about this earlier on Windows Weekly. They just did a, a, a deal that will be $13 billion to sell HoloLens headsets to the United States Army. Yeah. Selling, 100, selling 120,000 yeah. HoloLenses to the U.S. Army, uh, I think I think Microsoft does knows what they're doing, and I think he's an example of a of a of a non-founder leader who has in fact improved the company. But there are yeah. few and far between. He's the he he proves the rule. Yeah, he had a pretty easy exception. act to follow in, in Bomber. Yeah, he, yep. he couldn't do worse than Bomber. Yeah. yeah. He accepted the fact that Microsoft is not going to be the sexy company out there. They're just going to go out here and make this money uh, on, on, on the enterprise side of things and right. be happy with right. it. Right. Life all to the bank. Yes, yep. Mrs. Cleaver, I believe that Wally Google is taking data <laughs> they shouldn't take. And we're going to be much better than Wally. The Beaver, I, I, I should tell Clark you this, but I Haskell caught him. Edward Clark is a fictional character on Leave It to Beaver television situation comedy. Yes, I had to look that up, Mr. Jarvis. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You never saw it Leave It heart. to Beaver, Ant? I saw Leave It to Beaver in passing because, quite frankly, nobody in my household was interested in watching that television show. <laughs> I can imagine, yes. <laughs> it was kind of white. Been. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the ultimate. What did you watch as a kid? Was there, was there TV that you watched as a kid, like sitcoms or? Uh, yeah, Good Times, number one. Oh, come on. Uh, that's such Jeffersons. a stereotype. You would only watch it the black was. shows? It well. Hey, it, it facts are the facts, sir. That's, yeah, no, no, we, we I'm curious. Watched good yeah. times. We yeah. watched Good Times. We watched The Jeffersons. We wow. watched Sanford and Son. Because we, you watch things that you could relate to. Yeah, that's you right. Know? Well, you certainly can't I, relate I, to I the, all, the Beaver's home in the white suburbia. I mean, they it couldn't right. be whiter. So I, I guess, but those, those are those Lassie. are different areas. But those are you different know, eras I, completely. I mean, you're you're talking about uh, what's a guy who did. Uh, uh, the Jeffersons and 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 all the yeah. family, uh, the the TV visionary Norman guy, Lear. Uh, Norman, Norman Lear, Lear changed that. all that. So you're talking about pre and post Norman Lear, which is yeah. a different world. But I but I also have to say that the the genius of Good Times, the Jeffersons and Sanford and Sons is they got shows. everybody watching those. Like I was watching those as mm -hmm. well, uh, and um, and so that that was the that was the beauty of of, of that era. And, I also um, watched Mr. Ed when it came on. Uh, there you go. Oh, no, there you lost all your cred. Cause, cause you lost it all <laughs> in the way one. Way way way. <laughs> Mr. Ed's neither white nor black. It's a horse. It's equine. It's a horse. It's the, hequine, it's the equine side of the... That's pretty funny. And Wilbur, <laughs> clearly, that was Wilbur. not real any world anywhere. That'd be like watching Gilligan's Island. It was not related to anything in the real world. <laughs> but Donna Reed and Leave it to Beaver, they pretended... Ozzie and Harriet, they pretended to be real America, you know, the real hey, life. See, I'm going I'm mm -hmm. I'm to see, because these, these boys won't know this, but Dobie Gillis? Yeah, he, I'm a little uh, yeah. too young to be a Dobie Gillis guy, actually. I, I actually Gilligan, too, right? I loved it. It was Gilligan. It's pre-Gilligan. He was a, he pre was a beat, beatnik, right? Yeah. Yeah. Work! Yeah. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I think, you know, we're only a couple of years apart, but the, sometimes... You really can tell people's age cohorts by the TV shows yes, they watched and the music they listened to. And even a couple of years can make a big difference. I just missed Howdy Doody and Dobie Gillis and stuff. Yeah. Uh, by inch. You, know, you know what's one, one of the coolest, uh, or most satisfying uh, and underappreciated genres, uh, for lack of a better term, are reaction videos 
on YouTube where <laughs> young people oh. look at old people media <laughs> and discover it for the first time. It's actually really fun to watch. I now think. that would be funny. It's not Some as good as babies eating lemons, but it's okay. <laughs> No, but there, there are these like, you know, uh, 20 year olds who are watching Queen for the first time. Yeah. And like crying because it's so good. Right? Oh, interesting. It's very satisfying. It's very satisfying to watch. And there, some, some of the people just you don't go, think you know, it's, go to YouTube and Wait see, a minute. Come on. You don't think they're aiming at you? <laughs> they are absolutely <laughs> you don't, aiming. You, you don't you, think, what? Oh, cr okay, pretend you're crying. Pretend it's like the best music you ever heard. Well, no, no, no. Baby they, they, boomers I think, are going to love it. I think a lot of it is, is, uh, I think a lot of it is, yes. And, and there's a lot of pandering in terms of the type of content that's viewed. For example, a lot of the international stuff is like foreigners looking at American stuff yeah. for the first time. Right. Yeah. And American audiences are, you know, so large in number and, you know, the, the, they're pandering that a lot of the British like reaction video t people are looking at American content, the rules of football, which they don't understand, all this kind of stuff. And you would love this. Go, go, look, go look at the office blokes. It's three English guys and uh -huh. look at some of their football videos where they're like, you know, the, the hardest tackles in football and all this. They, they, they're watching YouTube videos I would and they're reacting that. to it. And, and you see them head scratching their heads. So like, what are the rules of football? I don't understand. Why are I they? Bet that is you know, and it, it, it's so much fun. <laughs> it really is fun. By the way, Good Times is coming back as an animated series on Netflix. I just want you to know, Aunt, just so you... Wow. You'll be ready for that. John Amos. Esther Rooley. That was a spinoff of Maud, which is a spinoff of all of the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and the Jeffersons a, was as well, yeah. also a spinoff. Yeah, that's right. They were their neighbors. The they were down the street. Yeah. 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 I was My watching. favorite... It was pretty uh, amazing um, moral chain... Yeah. Well, my, my favorite uh, episodes of All in the Family were when, when because George Jefferson was also a racist. Yeah. Yep. Uh, He's a black and, racist. and he would yeah. conspire yep. Yep. with Archie Bunker to keep the Puerto Ricans out. <laughs> and, you know, like it was so good. It was so good. You know, I was watching the QAnon documentary. This sounds like I'm going far afield. I'm not. Uh, it was on HBO. It's a four part thing. It's fascinating. Who is Q, basically, I'm trying to figure it out. But they'd interview some QAnon people, and one guy says, Hey, I'm an Archie Bunker. Archie Bunker made it okay to be a racist. And I thought, dude, you completely missed the <laughs> point missed the of point. that series. Oh, you, you, you are such an idiot. You thought <laughs> it was giving you permission to call people sp oh, No. Man. That was Bless his heart. <laughs> Bless, Bless his, heart. his heart. Bless his heart. That's exactly right. <laughs> Jimmy Walker, die no might. Came from good yep. times. Yep. Mm -hmm. Quite yeah. controversial. Really? Dynamite? Yep. What that's was controversial why, um, about it? That's why Mr. Amos wasn't sticking around. Oh, I didn't know um, that. He didn't like Dynamite? Yeah, because Amos is, is an actor. Jimmy Walker is a comedian. Yes. You know? It was kind of accidental, right? As the, I mean, there's the shtick. He wasn't Correct. supposed to be the center of the show, right? Correct. Oh, correct. and he didn't like it that it was getting maybe a little shuck and jive kind of too, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, like, oh, there's yeah. actually a lot of interviews of, of that whole cast about how they didn't know each other. They didn't like each other. They, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of conflict. Yeah. Like I that. didn't know that Lou Gossett Jr. was in it. I didn't know that. I didn't know that yeah, hmm. he got one of his early, he was Florida's brother, Wilbert. Hmm, wow. Early, early uh, guest wow. star. See, what fascinates me about outfit. all this is that yeah, look at that outfit. Yeah, yeah. I like the belt on the sweater. The belt. I think all sweaters yeah. should have belts. <laughs> yeah. Holy sure. cow. That's so 70s, man. That is so 70s. So the sitcom is the genre that is native to television. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yep. And it has not aged well. <laughs> well, except now you have Silicon Valley. You have you have these moments. Are those? Is, I guess they're still sitcoms. Um, they don't have laugh tracks. So one of the reasons I thought that is, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a on uh, Disney Plus. There was a show very very popular called WandaVision, uh, which is another Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, mm -hmm. show. Yeah, a lot of people loved it. I never saw the, it. Well, I never got into it. It was no, really the first it. three episodes were off putting because they were yeah. black and white sitcoms. With the one, they were fully in the sitcom. It was just the sitcom. It was just the sitcom. Really little, and it was yeah. like it was, and you're I, like, what? This does not age well, you know. I loved yeah. Mary Tyler Moore, but this, 
is not this is this does not age well. The the laugh track was grating. But yeah. Apparently there was a were they were the original one of it just filled before a live audience? So it wasn't a laugh track. That was a live audience just as grating. <laughs> But that, uh, it's, yeah, and it well, was Leo painful. Leo like people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was painful to get through. It Once you get through the lie. first three, it actually gets quite good. It explains the first three. It was kind of a brave move because, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess Big Bang Theory might was a, that was a traditional yeah. sitcom. Mm -hmm. But do yeah. they make them anymore? Are there sitcoms on? Uh, I don't watch, I haven't watched broadcast. I, and I used to be, a, you know, I'm a former TV critic. Um, I don't watch broadcast TV. haven't watched it in ages. Ages. Yeah, well, that's part of the problem. Nobody, nobody is, are they? Yeah. yeah. I think it's all cop shows and procedurals and reality. Reality. Yeah. I don't know if sitcoms yeah. are around anymore. Maybe that's that's an interest. So it was the first TV. Well, the variety show too, right? Milton Berle. That was the yeah, TV. Yeah, that was on that was right? on radio. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. See, right, comes here's around radio, yeah. Fibber, McGee, and Molly, and that was radio. There was, yeah, but it, it started, but I don't, I, I think it came into its in its own. It was, it was, the, it was the genre that was meant to be. Yeah, it sure. So, Ant, best, best sitcom ever. Your vote. <laughs> People are not going to like me for this. Uh oh. Married with children. <laughs> Married with children. Oh. Mm. I think Lisa loved that too. I'm going to say, the, I'm going to say the Office. The Office. Seinfeld Mike. for sure. Seinfeld. Seinfeld was great. Absolutely. Seinfeld was great. I, I mean, love the, the married with children. Cheers, <laughs> cheers. cheers. That's pretty. Cheers. Odd. Cheers, cheers is great too. Cheers, with children cheers was is, yeah. Cheers was the that classic was of the genre. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that everything. <clears throat> love My car is named Vera. And marriage, love, <laughs> and so April Fools is tomorrow. Oh, oh, can, I, can I just hide all day? Gird your loins because I hate it. I hate it. Well, one good thing, Google is not going to do it. Second year running, no Google. They were famous for this, yeah, and yeah. I hated it for every moment. I would love to see that that memo that goes out. No, here, you well, I'll read it to you. Get <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Business Insider got it. Oh no, really? Yeah, Marvin Chow, VP of Global Marketing at Google. So here's the here's the uh, memo. Throughout the past year, I've been so inspired by how helpful our products, programs, and people have been during humanity's toughest times. Some might argue if these have been the toughest times, but okay. We've done it with sensitivity and empathy, reflecting the range of challenging experiences so many are experiencing globally. As you may remember, last year we made the decision to pause our longstanding Google tradition of celebrating April Fool's Day out of respect for all those fighting COVID-19. Really? Really, that's why? Okay. With much of the world still grappling with serious challenges, we feel we should again pause the jokes for April Fool's Day this year. Like we did last year, we should continue to find appropriate ways to bring moments of joy to our users throughout the year, e.g. doodles, Easter eggs, etc. By the way, there is an Easter egg if you search Google for Ever Given. It's oh. it's just it's just a little Easter egg, little boats floating across. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing we're talking about. Yeah. Well, I wish I wish uh, Volkswagen. Oh my God! This fooled me. This fooled me. They actually said this is not an April Fool's joke. We are renaming Volkswagen America to Volkswagen because we're all electric. Volkswagen America. They we even got said, away from that whole diesel thing. Yeah. They even said yeah. this is not an April Fool's joke, and they released it uh, two days before. Yeah. That's missing how April Fool's jokes work. Exactly. You don't say that it's not an yeah. April Fool's joke. Yeah. Can you get a calendar? Uh, Volkswagen spokesman Mark Gillis said in an emailed statement Tuesday night, there will be no renaming of Volkswagen of America. The alleged renaming was designed to be an announcement in the spirit of April Fool's Day, highlighting the launch of the all-electric ID4 SUV and signaling our commitment to bringing electric mobility to all. So, yeah, they released it <laughs> several days too early. I Speaking bought of sitcoms, it. I loved Hogan's Heroes. That was a great Hogan! Accident. There will be no renaming! <laughs> <laughs> How did that ever get on the air? Apparently oh, it's popular in Germany now. Funny Nazis. Really? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, so Volkswagen, which was clever and certainly got a lot of attention, it did not 
Um, here's a professor at Dartmouth School of Tuck School of Business. Paul Argenti said, goofing around about who it is and what it's trying to do, particularly with anything related to sustainability, strikes me as really, really bad taste. It's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they said, oh, we accidentally posted it early. Mm, it's now removed from the website. I thought... I, I, I just want to hide tomorrow. I just hate it. I hate God, it. I hate it. Because yeah. it. oh. it's always, it's always ham-fisted. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you Google was actually pretty good at it, yeah. but I still hate it. No, Google was the best, but still, Google at least you knew it was a, a joke. Yeah. All right, no pranks. Want to see some great uh, volcano drone footage? Sure, please. What I line is this. that? Line uh, one hundred and seven. Guy melted one of his drones to get this. Uh, Ant's a big droner. Yeah, that's why. I've, that yeah, used to be. Like Can't fly around here anywhere. Oh, <laughs> I I've recently become one. I just absolutely love it. Which so drone much. do you have, uh, Mike? I have the Mini Two. Yeah, that's a nice, nice. one. Easy oh, to fly. Yeah. Oh, this is. Is this from Iceland? Yes, yeah, from Iceland. That's what. It's, it's amazing. <sighs> Let's turn on the sound here. Oh, it's just music. No, it's music. Yeah, yeah I don't care. I want to hear bubbling lava. But if, yeah, if you go through, go to the ones that have the video on them. So he apparently... Uh, Look at this. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's risky. You're pretty darn close to the heat. Oh, my he, God. He, yeah, well, look, he's going to go through. Watch out for the splashing magma. That's not going to be good. Yeah, there it goes. By uh, the way, <laughs> notice picture lost. Yeah, yep. he melted one of them. <laughs> Famous last cow. words at that point. He, he flew that. it. Oh, you must have, there must have been uploading footage, right? I mean, how did, yeah. yeah. That one, that's the one that melted them, I think. Oh my goodness. Uh, beautiful. You know what, they're beautiful because they're abstract, which is really yeah. kind of yeah. cool. There's also a great video of Icelanders um, playing volleyball on the lava field. I mean, there's another one, there's another one of, of, of scientists cooking hot dogs on the lava. <laughs> it's just great. People are having a fit that they put ketchup on it because they shouldn't do that. That's illegal, but. These are. This is what a drone was made for, though. This is isn't really. Yeah. Is this amazing? Oh, flying right into oh, hell. Was the not made for flying into a volcano. Oh. <laughs> he made it through. Oh. oh, that is pretty badass, though. Isn't that good? It is, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. You have to be at though. You'd have to be close enough to fly it, which means you'd have to be in the lava fields, wouldn't you? I mean, that's. Yeah, but did you guys see the ones are getting better and better? So, so you can go far. The, the far range enough. is getting yeah, better. Yeah. Did you see the one where the guy goes into the bowling alley and he ends up crashing the drone right into? Yeah, we watched that last week. week. That is so beautiful. Fun. It's, it's that is beautiful. so good. I, I'm I'm loving. It. You think this is an FPV drone or is it a ant or is it just a standard? I Mavic? presume it's FPV because of the uh, maneuvering. Yeah. So uh, that yeah yeah that's is the consumer drones you don't get that much flexibility. No. He's uh, flying right. Yeah that. yeah yeah. So what's the what's the likely cost of his melted drone? A thousand bucks. Uh, yeah. Probably more than that. I bought my I son an FPV drone for under a, under a thousand, but uh, of course you trick him out, so it depends how he tricked it out. Yeah, I'm figuring minimum fifteen plus another three four hundred bucks for the um, receiver uh, transmitter. But that doesn't melt. He can reuse that. He still right? has that because he can keep using that on another one. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Nice stuff. Thought you'd like that. Let's. Uh, let me think. What do I have to do here before we uh, wrap up? Let me give a one more commercial. We. I do want to do the uh, change log. Uh, lots more to come with Aunt Jeff and Mike. My three buds. Always look forward to this show, I got to say. Our show today brought to you by a new list that I think you're going to want to check out, the Enterprise Tech 30. This is a, a piece of seminal research developed by Wing Venture Capital in partnership with NASDAQ. These are the top 30 enterprises, but they're not public. They're in the private enterprise tech sector. That's a... That's something that's hard to, you know, look into. You really don't have, if they're not public, you don't have any idea which company is doing well or poorly because, you know, they don't have any reporting requirements. They can be cagey around growth and revenue. Uh, sales cycles can be long and arduous. And I have to say, unfortunately, you may see lists like this in other places, but they're 
A, they're often dominated by well-known consumer brands or mature B2B startups. And B, frankly, there's credibility issues because a lot of these lists are produced by lobbying or even pay-to-play methods. Uh, and, and even if they're not, they're absolutely subject to the bias uh, based on how much a company can generate hype around itself. That's not the point of the Enterprise Tech 30. In fact, if you look at the methodology here on the website, you'll see this is really done in a, in a very uh, responsible way to make sure that you're going to get a list of the enterprise startups with literally the most potential to tectonically shift how enterprises operate for the better. Anybody on this list, the ET30, they're on a fast track of growth, but they're also really changing how business is done. There will be exits, absolutely. Future IPOs, multi-billion dollar exits. You can't lobby your way onto this list. You can only be selected and, and become part of an elite community. The Enterprise Tech 30 focuses on companies with potential at all stages of maturity, not just companies with mature businesses and existing traction. There's startups in here, too. A great buying guide for enterprise executives looking to bring more validated, incredible digital innovation into their organizations. Who are the disruptors, the people who are going to change our world? The Enterprise Tech founders on this list should see their inclusion as the highest endorsement of their current and future success. And uh, by the way, if you're planning to build a publicly traded company, getting on this list is a watershed moment in your journey. Tech executives and high-performance operators will use the list to help guide the decisions on which companies to join. So there's a lot of interest in this. It's now out. The 2021 edition of the Enterprise Tech 30 brought to you by Wing Venture Capital and NASDAQ. Head over to enterprisetech30.com to see who made this year's list. Oh, you're showing it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Enterprise Tech, there's a lot more than just the list. Lots of information at enterprisetech30.com. We thank the ET30 Wing and NASDAQ for their support. Enterprisetech30.com. Chrissy Teigen is quitting... The Twitter, she was named by Twitter as the mayor, the unofficial mayor of Twitter. She's certainly popular on Twitter, 13.7 million followers. But after being beat up, blocked by President Trump, uh, attacked by many, uh, she's decided to call it a day. She's leaving. She'll be back. You think she'll be back? It just happens so often, is that? The, it's not. I it's, think they also miss some of the people who they did it right. Yeah, yeah. Those jerks. And we got to do a better job of de-jerking the place. But did did she say she blocked more than a million people? Yeah, and that was on uh, January sixth. That was that was all around the Capitol insurrection. Wow. Um, yeah, she said, "I'm just tired of the two follower punches." <laughs> For years, I've taken so many small two-follower account punches. To this point, I'm deeply, honestly, deeply uh, bruised. I think if you have that many followers, it's got to be pretty unusable. Yeah, yeah. Well, you shouldn't. And I think you'll see this on the big on the big accounts like that. They don't follow people. But right. still, there's nothing to keep people from name dropping you. That's the problem. And so you can't yeah. really Twitter. Get that's a flaw in the in the in the um, it in is. the structural flaw. Yeah, may, yeah. Maybe she'll come back because you're right. People like uh, her are hooked on the notoriety and i think fame twitter will keep right? inventing new mechanisms to make it better i hope i see some evidence yeah. that they're doing that i think so i think they're working hard because they don't want this reputation um right it's not it's not a good look for they're doing a lot any publicly held company so yeah it's sad um facebook also introduced new stuff today yes big story um, I was I was trying to track that down. That broke uh, right as we went to press, as they say. It's line thirty nine. Because I, I haven't uh, I haven't read up on this. Let me read. It's very you. long. It's a twenty one minute read, according to uh, Nick Nick media. Clegg. You Nick Clegg and the algorithms. Online. They're changing the news feed, right? Uh, yeah, they're adding some stuff in there. But this is a very long piece where he, where he kind of it's it's it's. A, bit of an issue he kind of tries to say and this is a fairly standard facebook shtick is it's not just us it's you too right we're giving you what you want and you can change it and so on and so forth. he's actually addressing three things that we've talked about before on the show mm -hmm. the atlantic article comparing facebook to the doomsday machine which you 
<laughs> excoriated. <Sorry about. laughs> the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma, which I agree was dopey. Yep. Uh, uh, Shoshana Zuboff's Surveillance Capitalism. You've which said, I roll my eyes at. Yeah. Not, uh, but I do agree with Nick that it isn't just Facebook. Uh, right. You know, it is us. And Facebook and is a reflection it's us, of us. And it's media and, yeah. and, and, and so on. The th I got So I, I agree with a large number of his points. Um, I got upset about a couple of things. I got upset that he has a line in there asking whether government should decide what conversations citizens no, should have. They can't. Yeah! They're not allowed Don't to. even raise that. Why would you raise that? I, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm upset that Facebook uh, has been playing to the regulatory capture and saying, yeah, go ahead, redo 230, regulate us. It's fine. Tell us what to do. We'll do that. That's a cop out. Um, they should they should try to set their own standards of behavior, and they're, and they're still not doing that. I find that upsetting. But nonetheless, I generally agree. But in any case, in there, they announced a few new things. There's got to go way down on this damn thing. Yeah, this, um, it's a long article. Holy cow. Uh, uh, there's but he, new... has to, he has to kind of establish why they did the news feed and all that stuff and before he could say what's going to change. So they're going to change the algorithm? They're changing a few things. It's easy. It's easier to go to chronological <clears throat> versus algorithm. Hallelujah! You know, I always uh, it's always been there, but now you, now they're going to make yeah. It but easier. it would revert. You know, I would go into right. Facebook, set it to chronological, and the next time I came back, it was back to the algorithmic feed. Honestly, Facebook's initial promise, which they should have a switch for, is I just want to see everything posted by the people I follow in chronological order, and that's that. Right. And that seems like that's what the Facebook promised. This would be right. f the feed of people you care about. That seems like it would be pretty good. Instagram was that initially. Uh, they went algorithmic. Even Twitter has gone somewhat algorithmic. Somewhat algorithmic. Yep. <laughs> Though when I switch on Twitter off the algorithmic, I actually go back to it. Because I miss things. It does, it does find things that I would miss. Right. Um, so I just put up the, the list of the changes there. Um, so, you know, we'll see if it makes any difference. Uh, my, com my argument with Facebook constantly is that, that rather than saying, oh, government should regulate us, Facebook should come up with a higher order view of what they are, uh, or, or the governance board should regulate this us. Is, no, okay, Facebook so should regulate us. I'm itself. looking at some of the changes. You can control who can comment on your post. So I think that's good. Before you've been able to say who can see it, now you say... Look, you that's know, maybe this good. is a public post, but only friends can comment on it. I think that's very good. That's good. Yep. A, that's a feature a, like that would have would have kept uh, Chrissy Teigen on Twitter, right? Yeah, and it might have saved yeah. Google Plus, right? Because part of the problem with Google Plus was the spamming you would get in your yeah. in your comments. Well, I think on Twitter, can't you do that, Mike? I think you can say only people only who I follow can comment. Only people I you can think. I think only verified too. people can do that, but I could be mistaken about oh, that. Don't quote me. The problem is, I I can do that. I can say I only want to see comments from verified people. I can control what I see, but that still does not control right. what somebody <laughs> says on Twitter that everybody About else you. can see. Yes. Yeah. So but, if somebody but searches but if for you, my name on Twitter, they're going to see stuff I don't see because it's blocked. But they're. But that's also see true it. if you if you leave Twitter, so that it may, has no effect to leave Twitter. That's right. I've left Twitter. I don't use it at all, but people can still name tag me actually i made yeah. my account private so does that mean you can still i think you can't name tag me unless you're a friend now right in twitter i, I think you can still friend? type it out but it doesn't you can type it out but you can't at leo it. laporte right i hope that's the case <laughs> i don't know i'm not checking so i don't know i don't miss it <laughs> i love mastodon uh, we have now more than a thousand users in our twit.social instance, and it's very nice. It's exactly where I want to be um, because it's it's yeah, kind of like what Twitter so was in the old days. It's geeks. We had a couple people on there yesterday talking about we need to have a twit uh, indie car race uh, outing. Oh yeah, there was a big yeah, the, big yeah because I mentioned <laughs> I was suddenly into Formula One last week, and Chris Clark said, <laughs> "Oh, you should get an indie car. They come to Monterey." Like, they, you know, you could see them in California once or twice a season. Yeah. All right. I'm willing to Road go. Trip. <laughs> Road trip. Road trip. What else? Let's see. What other changes? More control. Uh, 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 the 
new tool is example of control and curate your news feed uh, by adjusting your commenting on it. You can further control how you want to invite conversation on your public posts, limit potentially unwanted interactions. I think that's good. If you're a public figure, creator, or brand, you can choose to limit your commenting audience on your public post to help you feel safe, Chrissy. So, Chrissy, come on over. We're making it easier to sort and browse the news feed, giving you more control over what you see. They've launched Favorites, a new tool where you can control and prioritize posts from the friends and pages you care about most in the news feed. By selecting up to 30 friends and pages to include in Favorites, their posts will appear higher in the ranked news feed. So this is sort of giving me what I was say wanted. It's still going to put it's, other it, stuff It heads in. down that road, at least, yes. Yeah. The feed filter bar is a new menu at the top of the news feed. It offers easier access to most recent, the so-called chronological feed. Uh, that's good. And the feed filter bar will be visible on the Android app when you scroll up on the news feed. It's coming to iOS. And they're both in the shortcuts menu. All right. Did I miss it? There's a, why am I seeing is this? not on Facebook. Say again? She was Twitter. She quit. T I what, oh, no, I'm saying, but is, oh, she, I don't know. is she on Facebook? I wouldn't know. I don't know. That's another place I don't hang. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even have an yeah, account. I kept, I kept my Twitter account. I kept my Instagram account mostly so during shows I could display tweets, but I really didn't want to have anything to do with Facebook. So I just, and I don't All miss right. it. You know, it's not like I was addicted and then now I dream about it and wish I could go back. I, you know, I, yeah. I'm fine without it. You're also glowing more, too. I'm glowing much more. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you, you Aunt. Facebook. You're glowing. Thank you. You're so right. <laughs> Understand why, as you said, uh, Jeff, why you see a post. It'll Because it'll... you're a Nazi. Yeah. What? Why am I seeing this? Because you have weird uncles. Why? Uh, related engagement, related topics, location. Okay. So those are the big changes. So if you're yeah, a Facebook user. It's a tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, good for them. You'd think they'd be trying this all the time. But. Yeah, you'd think that this would be, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Facebook is reopening. They've set a date for reopening their San Francisco and Bay Area offices, but no free food and no transit, so stay home. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Uber's opening its San Francisco offices on Monday. Facebook will open May 10th in its Menlo Park offices uh, at 10% capacity, though, so most people won't be, oh, won't okay. be coming. Uh, Google has announced it's, it's, it, too, has decided uh, it's time to open up the offices sometime in April. You know, I, don't, I, I wish these companies would, I guess they can't legally say it. If you're vaccinated, but I think they guess they can't legally say it. Well, Rutgers mm. University is saying students cannot return unless they're vaccinated, which I wish my university mm. would do. I love that. Maybe a university can do yeah. that, but a company can't. Google is encouraging workers to get vaccinated, but is not requiring it. Uh, you won't be required to come into the office until at least September, but they are starting to open up in uh, April, they told workers in an email today. <clears throat> Uh, Microsoft, same thing. We talked about that earlier on Windows Weekly. Uh, I get. I th I would guess that there's some legal limitation on requiring. Well, I guess I'll have to find out because I'd love to say to our employees, you know, more than half of them are getting are getting vaccinated now. Uh, you can come back if you're vaccinated. So I'm looking up SHRM, which is the Association of HR People. What a fun group. Um, <laughs> What a great name. It's a perfect name for an HR group. Sure. Uh, they, they went they went in December to, to lawyers saying, is there a basis? And in some cases they say, yes, if it's a threat to other employees, yes, you could require it. A school, it makes sense a school could require it. Right. But somebody in the chat room told me earlier today that it's because it, it they are not FDA approved, they're emergency usage approved. Uh. So I don't know. I don't I don't know. It makes sense. You couldn't. You can demand somebody uh, get vaccinated. I wish you could. <laughs> it would be nice yep. if you could. Yeah, actually, we're hearing, uh, Mike, that Mexico uh, vastly underreported its deaths and 
it's it's a big number now as it uh, I like 60 percent yeah um mexico is one of those basket case countries like brazil that is just you know and and i've known this it, it's i've been watching it pretty closely for a long time and bolsonaro has been you know lying in about, brazil yeah well, Bolsonaro in Brazil, and also uh, what's his name, the guy, the Mexican president, they've all, they've they've all been lying about it, um, under downplaying it, just like Trump used to, and it's it's really a problem. Um, the difference is that the United States is very quickly ramping up vaccinations, and that's not happening in Mexico or Brazil. So, it's it's going to be a long time for Latin America, I think, um, before there's uh, herd immunity or you know widespread. But you feel safe down there. You 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 and Amira have not got COVID, have you? We have not. And, and you've been um, traveling we, back I, and forth quite a bit. I wouldn't go to most of Mexico. I wouldn't go to Mexico City, um, where we have a lot of friends. Um, but Oaxaca is kind of a unique case because it's very spacious, open, and it's amazing. Everyone wears masks here. Oh, that's everyone. Good. And, and, and every, and you go to a, you, you know, the restaurants are all open and stuff like that. You go to a restaurant, you have to walk through a puddle of like disinfected water really? and wipe your feet on the thing. Really? And then they take your temperature, they spray you down, they wow. give you hand sanitizer, they give you a Damn. bag for your mask because they don't want the mask on the table. So the, that good. goes in a paper oh. bag. I mean, it's, it's hard, the universal 100% of the restaurants and not do government all mandated, but just kind of uh, no. everybody's agreed to do this. That's great. That's right. I was flying yeah, but, there, but, Mike. Uh, it was great. I mean, it was, you know, um, the plane was fuller than when we did it six months ago or whatever. And everybody was masked. Um, it was fine. The airport was fine. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend travel as it used to happen, but like we're, we're coming down here for, for the long term, basically. And, um, yeah, but we wouldn't travel the way we did until we get vaccinated for sure. But but coming yeah. to to Oaxaca, it's a, it's a straight shot. And then once you're here, it's just very easy to stay socially distant from everybody and and stay safe. So that's why we came here. And tequila will kill anything. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> including uh, you. Well, eventually. you don't use the t <laughs> No, 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 no. You don't use the t word in, in Oaxaca. The, the, the oh no, you, you can use this mezcal. Mezcal. No, mezcal. 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 Excuse me. Yes. Yes. So, and that That's kills everything. Yeah, that kills. Yeah. <laughs> that is brain cells first. Rocket fuel. Exactly. <laughs> Periscope shut down today. What's Periscope? <laughs> In other news, Periscope <laughs> hadn't been shut down yet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's so funny, you know, Twitter has not does not have the greatest track record. No. Uh with buying these things. They bought Periscope in 2015. It was very hot. Who's the best at buying things and keeping them alive? Kevin well, the Harris. best at buying things, I don't know about the keeping them alive part, but the best at buying things is Apple because they always pay uh, a small amount for non-flashy companies that right. have really good yep. technology. They integrate them into their own products and you never hear from them again. And yep. almost everything that they buy is actually a core part of what they do going forward and it's mass, you know, Distributed on a mass level. So Apple, I, I think I'd Adobe say is, the best is another day. company like that too. And yeah, Microsoft Adobe. has done a pretty good job. They've been some big acquisitions like uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, uh, uh, Nokia, yeah. Nokia, Skype. <laughs> well, I was joking. About Nokia. Nokia didn't work out. I forgot so about well. LinkedIn. Uh, but for a, but a lot of these companies, it's been okay. They, they certainly don't. They don't buy a lot of Nokia. Was an overture. Was were the kind of poster yeah, boys yeah. were not. But was the writing on the wall for Periscope? I mean, it yeah. just seemed like yet another fad. Yeah, yeah well, TikTok the killed them all. Yeah. By the way, uh, somebody put a link to a TikTok video on Twitter. So yeah, Twitter at least still has TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the socially, here it is, the socially distanced dance troupe. Let's I watch. just put this up for Ant. It'll probably irritate him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I got to change the sound. Hold on. Got to get it to come through my uh, my computer. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Ants missing all the fun. Wait Thank a minute. Let God. me get the sound. Let's do it over again. <laughs> you like ballet, Ants? You can try that one too. Is this the Greatest Showman? What is this? I'm not sure what it is. It's a three-parter. 
Does it, it move? veer to dance with a mask? It'll get more impressive in a second. Give it another minute. Here we go. The dance number, Ant. The dance oh, number. Why did you put this on the rundown? This oh, is right. all you see on TikTok. This stuff like this. TikTok is just all this. This is not even special. <laughs> this is just what yet I, another. What I appreciate is <laughs> these people went out and shot the damn thing. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah. that, that, yeah. that ticks. I feel like you that's know, from. Um, I love that. I feel like we'll that's, Then there's more, and, and then there's more after that. And. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the point of all of that was. Phoenix Warp in the chat. Wait. I put up some weird hovering. stuff in there. Yeah, Phoenix Warp was about to mute, but I, I muted it for him. I muted it for him. Um, I don't care about what happened at Congress last week. It didn't. It was no, nothing important, you. right? No, they're no. jerks. No. You might not care about the fact that there's new pixel buds on the way, Jeff. <laughs> Will they no, bloody they well work, work this time? Is this the, they this won't work either. Unlikely. No. Why do they keep making these? This is the third iteration, right? Pixel buds well, A, they call them. Well, I guess wired was first, yes. Then the wireless was was next, and now. Could they just have them con stay connected? That's all I ask. In 2017, they had a wire connecting the two of them, but they didn't connect to the... They were still Bluetooth. Right. And then, and that was the one where they really seemed like, oh, man, they were doing demonstrations at Google I.O. of instantaneous translation. And they just made it oh, look yeah. so good. And then it just World didn't, peace. Yeah, it just didn't work that well. And then you got the ones that clicked and disconnected. Ugh. and Awful. Yuck. And now they've got the new ones, Pixel Buds A... Visually indistinguishable from the current Pixel Buds, except for new colors, <laughs> but otherwise identical. But but is it like the A phones in that it'll be a lesser model or it's just a later model? Yeah, that's kind of uh, interesting. Um, the branding of the A is it's the cheaper model. Yeah. Don't know. We don't know the price yet, actually. So uh, this is just, I that guess... That will say a lot, yeah. Yeah, that, that will tell us if A means... What what A means if it means cheaper? Did you enter the change log and not tell us? Oh, I did. That was a change log. Let's do the Google. <laughs> Google change Thank log. you for. It's like you wandered across the border I, I into Canada. I wandered into change <laughs> log. I wandered into change log. Google continually. I think the one product Google is updating faster than any other is Google Maps. More updates to Google Maps. Not like a hundred of them. Yeah. Huge. They're just going crazy. Live view augmented reality directions come to airports, transit stations, and malls. That means you hold up the phone and you can see where where you are with an arrow and icon, so you you know that you know this is we're we're going. You've had these outside for a while. There's the uh, and, and, and Annie's pretzels that way. Yeah, Annie's pretzels that way exactly. <laughs> and and it's going to be so good when it's glasses, right? It's just dumb to hold up your phone <laughs> once that's like. That's what this is AR for, glasses right? is going to be amazing. Yeah. 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 Uh, now suggestions. By the way, those are the AR directions are available in very limited places. Some malls in Chicago, Long Island, Los Angeles, Newark, San Francisco, San Jose, and Seattle. They'll be coming to transit stations, airports, and malls in Tokyo and Zurich in the coming months. But more cities on the way. As you might imagine, they've got to you know, shoot video, and, and I don't know what they have to do to make this work. They have to do some sort of mapping. Here's a, here's a video of, from the Zurich airport, how you would get to go down one level stair. I think that's good. That'll that's be very cool. helpful. And you're right, Mike, that's what this glasses, this is a taste of what glasses could be. I, th I think the augmented reality glasses are going to be the coolest thing we're all going to be talking about for the next two years. Uh, starting with, you know, we're going to hear about Apple. I can't wait this year. Can't yeah, wait. it's going to be. So I, I think Mike's amazing. a sitcom character where he's, he's Uncle Mike. He's the last person <laughs> yeah. on earth who's still on Google Plus. The last person on earth who still uses Google Plus. <laughs> I, I'm the Eddie Haskell of tech. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're the. Uh, um, uh, oh, I, I wish I'm faster in my brain, but I'm not. 
I'm the Newman of tech. The no. new hello Newman. There you go. Google, Newman. Google now will let you. Have, there'll be a menu for trip options, and it will indicate with a little green leaf which trip options are eco-friendly. As if fewer you didn't, hills. As if you didn't less know. jams. No, like walk. <laughs> it's better oh. than. There's that too. <laughs> walk is better than driving. That kind of thing. Um, lots of changes, boy. Um, yeah, tons, tons. You, there, if if the eco-friendly route has about the same ETA as the fastest route, it will default to the fuel-efficient route. But you could change that in settings. So that's kind of interesting. The most fuel-efficient route, eight percent lower CO two emissions, for example, that kind of thing. Hmm. I think that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little trivial, yeah. Uh, there'll be alerts that will tell you when you're navigating through low emissions zones. That matters. What does that mean? Los Angeles? <laughs> I don't know. As, don't admit you're in the... It'll uh, initially be France, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, and the UK. More countries okay. coming soon. Uh, new map layers for weather and air quality. I like that. First yeah. in Australia, yeah, India, and the US. <clears throat> And there will be a new grocery pickup tool, but you'll have to be in Portland and you'll have to be shopping at Fred Meyer. It'll let you share your location and ETA with the store via maps so that your groceries are ready when you arrive. Fred's packing them right now. Google Meet is extending unlimited video calls for free Gmail accounts to June. This is something they did for uh, the pandemic. It's going to continue. Mm -hmm. Kids' profiles are rolling out to the Chromecast now. By the way, I'm glad I took your advice. I got one Chrome, the new Chromecast, and I just ordered two more. That's great, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it is. Yeah. And they are, for some reason, they're keeping that one up to date. It feels like that's the product that they're uh, most devoted to. Um, Google and is... And that's, a, that's been a game changer for those of us who travel. So... I, you know, staying in one place or another, and I just plug in the Chromecast, and it just just how I, do you have I, I to? Oh, that's interesting. TV. You yeah. have to pair it to the Wi-Fi, though, right? So yes. how do you? Yeah. So uh, how does that? I okay. guess you, oh, you just go your through phone, the setup process. Yeah, your phone's on the Wi-Fi, and then you say, "I see it." Okay. Yeah, because we're well, going I, on vacation I, next I, week. By the way, I won't be here next week. Jason will be what? Filming. What? I'm going on vacation. Haven't He's done that in a while. Chrome on a vacation just over Where the hill going? in napa just to uh oh. calistoga to take the oh, waters really? was this um, the place where you almost went before in the fire no, that burned down Ooh, no Ooh. the place we lisa and i got married and we would stay on a regular you know every wow. year on our honeymoon uh on our anniversary uh we were going there uh last summer yeah, it would be going to be our first trip after the pandemic. When we got there, they said, "Yeah, you should turn around. I think we're going to get wow. evacuated." And we, it was pretty smoky, and so we got back it in the car, uh, and at, you know, halfway home, got the evacuation warning saying, "Get out, wow. get out." And it didn't burn down during that fire, but then a subsequent wildfire oh, did, and it's and, gone. And here's a here's a pro tip, Leo, for uh, that I learned as a um, part owner of a winery. Don't <laughs> Don't get anything from 2020 <laughs> that the entire... Oh, the wine you know, is not going to be the, good. Everything's smoked. Everything is weird. Uh, just, you know, if, if if they offer you like a white or a rosé or something like that from 2020, just kind of say, anything from 2019? Oh, golly. Yeah. Did not think about that. Oh. Yeah, the, wi the wineries are, are trying to get through this year. They're, they're shipping bottles. It's They're hoping people don't notice and, you know, et cetera. But like... 2020 was a I thought horrible you said that was an year. oaky Chardonnay. It's very um, oaky. Smoky yes. Chardonnay. Here's the, here, I went to the website for the place that we used to go, Calistoga Ranch. And, yeah. and basically, <laughs> the Calistoga Ranch is closed indefinitely. There's a picture of a very smoky place and a button that says donate. So Save us. That's not yeah. a help us. It's not a, yeah. not encouraging. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. It's, it's too bad. It's owned by a very, successful hotel change though so it's my yeah, hope they'll yeah. they'll rebuild it and so we're going to a different place <laughs> one yeah. that didn't burn down uh so it's yeah i won't though. be i won't be here next week yeah i love calistoga it's beautiful i love napa and i yeah. and thank you for that tip we'll look for wines pre-20 20, awesome. 2020 yikes so i was thinking but this all came up because you mentioned the uh the new uh google tv chromecast with google tv so yeah, if i chromecast, brought that yeah. 
I should bring that. Yes. Just plug it into the uh, into the into the HDMI cable, uh, the port on the back of the TV. It. Yeah. Plug it in, and you are you're good to just don't forget. You know, to I do everything you leave. Don't leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the biggest one. But they're so I'm, cheap I'm, that it's even if you do, it's, it's not, not the, the end, end of the world. world. Yeah. I'm totally the next person in the room. But the the original Chromecast that I had umpteen years ago, and when I was traveling more regularly, that you plug it in at the hotel, and you have to connect to the hotel Wi-Fi. But the hotel Wi-Fi had some other weird yeah, it had a capture authentication yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that still yeah. the case nowadays? Because I don't know. I hardly ever turn on a TV at hotels. I don't stay. I don't stay in hotels. So yeah, the Airbnb no is just a login. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think the captive right. portal might not work, except that you would do that on the phone. And you could get through the captive portal on the phone, and then you'd have the Wi-Fi. Maybe at that point you could hand it Go off. Go through a lot of data. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll check. You know, that, that may be your right. Uh, we, we're staying in a hotel. And here's uh, my next car, a Fiat 500. It's got the Hague logo on it. You're not buying a Fiat. No, Leo. I'm not. No, You're not no. buying a Fiat. I'm joking. But, it's, but look at the colors on the side of it. I love it. it, cool. it I guess when you talk to it, it's going to do the Google... It's uh, the 500, 500L, 500X models inspired with elements inspired by the Google colors on the door and in the interior. You'd really have to be a Google fan. It has a little button on it yeah. that says, uh, hey, Google, on the side. Sorry, didn't mean to trigger trigger you. <laughs> um, I'd get it. I'd like that. Yeah, and I guess you can uh, you can query the Google Assistant in the car, but you can also query the Google Assistant at home to ask about the fuel level, see if your car's locked, uh, switch on the emergency lights. You just say, hey, you know who? Ask my Fiat. And uh, that's pretty cool. I think we're going to see a lot more of that, obviously. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that is the Google Change. I think we're going to take a break unless you have something else. I think we've gotten, I'm just looking here. Uh, you, you skipped you one got, of the change uh, logs. I skipped several of the change logs. Yeah, is there, <laughs> is there one you cared off. about? YouTube. I thought the, the YouTube hide and likes things was. They test not, hiding, not hiding dislikes, dislikes in response to car targeted campaigns. So this happens all the time where you get people say, oh, the thumbs, the thumbs down this. And I guess it'll hide. I don't know. It's just a test. And I, and another teaser at the end of the show, at the during the picks, I'm going to tell you how to do that on your own. Hide the hide the likes. Hide it all. Hide the likes. Hmm. I think this is the end of the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, I'm just looking to see if we did Volkswagen. Uh, I think we've done everything. Yes, I think you've done everything. What is uh, it that you? Does it matter if Zoom is going to have an SDK? Does that does that make it to you guys? Yeah. No. Yeah, when when they come out with it and people start using it all, we'll I'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah, I think I think you got it, boss. Well, Our the picks? whole likes thing. Well, okay, it, it really I, can't I let go of this. In it. I find value <laughs> in it. Of course you do. I You're a creator. Well. Because, but you, uh, but you know, there have been targeted dislike campaigns, right? I know, I know, no one would do that to you. Well, well, see, I, I think about this reminds me of um, a, a this week in tech episode from last year, and that video had a bunch of dislikes on it, and it bugged the crap out of me. And I'm I'm glad that I could see that it had dislikes because I oh. and other people can help amplify that video because it had a great message. It was featuring Miss Lexi Savitas and she talked about women in tech. And, and people disliked know. it. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this this is bull crap. And I liked that I was able to see that people were clicking dislike in a trolling effect yeah. or whatever to, to so you could to try to you could push click, it down. You could so click I like. could fight back. Yeah. Right. And so this is an example up. of what it would look like. There's a uh, nine hundred seventy eight thumbs up but and doesn't show the dislike count. The move was made, quote, in response to creator feedback around well-being. <laughs> it hurts my feelings when you have the dislike button. Could you yeah, hide but dislikes? Then, 
So, but but that's when you should just get rid of both of those buttons, likes and dislikes. If if that's the case, if you're worried about well being, just don't have like. Yeah, because you could you can actually, if you're a creator, you can still see it in your private, you know, YouTube studio area. In the stat, yeah, in the stats. Yeah, but other other people can't see it, so no one knows that everybody hates you. <laughs> Nobody yet. <laughs> this is a, an experiment that will not be around for long. My prediction. One of the reasons I skipped it. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's an experiment. Google experiments with stuff. This these A/B yeah, tests is true. all the time, all the time. They I predict with some things for a couple of years. <laughs> hey, if you're on Verizon's 3G network, the clock Bye. is ticking. Bye -bye the now. end is near. The Bye -bye. end is near. Um, back in January. Verizon said they didn't really have a time frame for decommissioning the network. They've now said December, you have some time. December 31st, 2022. <laughs> now, it is the case that there are people with phones that only do 3G. They don't do 4G or LTE or 5G. So there will be people, every time this happens, there will be people who will say, oh, yeah. my God, my you made my phone break. Uh, of the 94 million customers... Verizon has, they estimate about one percent are still using 3G. That's nine. That's almost a million people. That's a lot of people. Wow. So I'm having a senior moment. Uh, the comp competitor to CDMA was uh, GSM. GSM. You know, I, I, I Verizon was that, CDMA. That headache that, that was the yeah. one that pretty yeah. much won, right? Was GSM. Well, it did, and now it's LTE, and everybody's LTE, and it, it neither GSM nor CDMA. They're all just using LTE, so. Mm -hmm. You can use GSM over LTE, but, you know, with, between Volte and LTE, and I just, everybody's just using LTE. So, is LTE a flavor of GSM? No, LTE is something else entirely, and most people are, it's, it, it's the high-speed data, and most people are putting voice over LTE. Got it. All right. Some people are doing GSM over LTE, um, but that... That's, I think, a transitional technology. I bet it's gone by now, but I know people were doing that. LTE replaces both CDMA and GSM, ultimately. <clears throat> and it, pretty much everybody's got LTE. Most yeah. phones are LTE by now. But that's the point of turning off the 3D, 3G CDMA stuff. I... Think about you, Miss Stacy. <laughs> pardon me? Oh, yeah, this is this is where Stacy could... Thinking about Miss Stacy Absolutely right come in and... <laughs> and Check straighten like out. Captain Sam. She's <laughs> <just laughs> rolling her eyes Sam. at us now. Oh, you guys just don't <laughs> grasp how this stuff works, do you? It's not a prow. <laughs> it's a GSM. <laughs> there was there was a really good post on a blog called Stone Soup. Uh, I posted more for you guys than, but our audience might be interested in it. I like that the boat is stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad that the boat is stuck it's bad for lots of people and lots of reasons I know that please don't think that me liking the stuck boat is an ideological stance <laughs> this is not an opinion I have about boats or about canals or about things generally being stuck it's bad that the boat's stuck it's bad for lots of people and lots of reasons but I can't deny it I like that the boat is stuck I like that. So far, we all seem to agree the boat is stuck. There's no debate over whether or not the big boat is stuck. It's a big boat. It's stuck. We're all aware of those facts. <laughs> and even those of us who are currently located in outer space believe. Furthermore, most of us share the opinion that it's disagreeable logistically for the boat to be stuck. The boat being stuck is inconvenient. It's a big disruption. Nobody can say it's not a big disruption. None of my distant relatives will get into arguments on the Facebook <laughs> about whether or not the stuck boat is making a nuisance for a lot of people. I like that. Another thing I like, we know exactly what the problem is that is making the boat be stuck. It's a big boat, and it's stuck. Sure, <laughs> sure, shipping and manufacturing of boats and canals have lots of connections to varied and sundry histo historical and sociological issues, but this immediate problem in front of us is a stuck boat. And we can look at that problem for precisely what it is. It's not stuck for mysterious reasons related to a long history of humans cruelly exploiting other humans. 
It's not stuck because a politician wanted money from an organization that profits from human suffering. It's not stuck because someone's pretending to be in favor of free speech is trying to promote hateful ideologies. It's stuck because it's big, bigger than the place where it is. And that's why it's stuck. <laughs> It goes on. It. <laughs> it goes on. It's good. It's a. It's an antidote, and uh, and he and he and he closes. I hope the boat gets unstuck. I do. I hope that nobody gets hurt, and I extend that hope all the way through to every kind of hurt that's possible. And selfishly and honestly, part of me hopes that nobody gets hurt, so I can keep on liking that the big boat was stuck, and maybe the boat can just stay stuck for a minute, so I can keep on cherishing a situation that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the boat is stuck. That's you know, all. That's a wonderful. To it. That's a. That's a wonderful post. I wish I had written it. I but love it. Respect. Respect. But but let me just let me just throw one horrible spin oh, no. on this whole thing. Oh no. Oh. In no. in the conspiracy theory circles, they in fact believe oh, that the crap. boat was stuck because Hillary Clinton. <laughs> oh no. Was traffic trafficking minors. And there's a whole, I don't, I don't even know. There not, really is, what, of course there yes, is. Yes, of course there is. Of course there is. Um, I, you know what? I'm trying to find uh, uh, attribution for this. All I can say, it's stone-soup.ghost.io, and it's written by somebody named Gailey. But it's really great. Really, really it's good. It's what we needed at a time like this. Yep, yep, yep. Let's uh, let's start, since Mike is visiting us all the way from Oaxaca. By the way, we were a little worried because you said your bandwidth wasn't great, but it's it's been beautiful. It's been great, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike Elgin, Elgin uh, mikeelgin.substack.com is his new newsletter. Please read it, and then when you get it, say, I love this. I'm going to subscribe. How much is it to subscribe? Uh... I think it's five bucks a month. He doesn't even know uh, because like that. Substack yeah. takes care of it all. Just just sign up for the free thing and, you know, it, you, you'll love it. I just guarantee it. that everyone listening to this show will absolutely love it and it's free. I'm going to so. subscribe. I Great. like it. Mike, your pick of the week. Okay, so I have three quick ones. Um, the first one, we were talking about newsletters and Substack and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm a paid uh, user of hey.com, the, the email service. Oh, yeah, you use it, huh? I do. Uh, I don't use it that much. I, I use both it and Gmail. It's very complicated. And I'm, I'm a hardcore zero inbox kind of guy. So my inbox is always empty. And I've written about that on my newsletter. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm fascinated by the fact that hey has a service that almost nobody knows about. That's really fantastic. So if you're a paid subscriber to Hey, it costs 100 bucks a year, uh, and you have a you know Hey email address, yes. which you will, they'll give you one if you yes. subscribe. They have a newsletter publishing service oh. that is m breathtakingly simple. What you do is is you write an email to world at hey dot com. Oh, and and when you do that, it will publish a public page. It will create a blog, basically. And it will offer to anybody who goes to that page the ability to either subscribe via RSS or subscribe via email, and it becomes an email newsletter. Everything subsequently that you post to world at hey.com is delivered to anyone who so signs up for your newsletter. Now, one of the things I love about this is that it's so brain dead simple. You just write an email and send it. That's how you post to this thing. That's how you create it. That's how you do everything. That's all you do. Um, but back in the day, there, there used to be many years ago, people will remember there was a, a service called Posterous, which innovated. Oh, I the, loved Posterous. Yeah. I'm so sad yeah. about Posterous. You yeah. could post a blog post by sending an email. So you I did when I was in China would, because Facebook and Twitter and everything were blocked back in 2009. I used Posterous to blog my trip by email. So, so, so uh, Squarespace also had that feature until about six months after I signed up for Squarespace, in which case they canceled <laughs> they it. it. But you used to be able to, to, to post a blog post by email on Squarespace. They killed it. It's a rare feature now. But, that, but Hey World, which is what this service is called, does that. You can just do all your blog posting nice. by email. 
anyway, so if you're if you have any interest in hay.com, it's another reason to subscribe to that. And you can do a Substack like newsletter without that's even simpler than Substack. Is there an address for your hay newsletter? Do you do, are you doing this or no? Because you have Substack. I am not currently doing this because yeah. I'm on Substack, right. but but it's just a, a really cool. It, it's you know. You could use it to actually publish a newsletter, but it's really for, like, for example, if Jeff wants to send a newsletter to like 20 colleagues right. or whatever, or just post something for students or something, it's just instantaneous. You literally send one email and you've got this thing. It's done. You've got all this stuff going on. You've got a newsletter, you have a blog, you have all this stuff. So it's very cool in that sense. So, that, so that's my long one. I have two very quick ones. The second one is I know that at Twit, of among the many coffee making things that are there in the office. Oh my God. One of yes. which is the, one of which is the AeroPress, which yes. is always sort of kind Every of day. there. Yes. All right. So, so I am a huge, I have become a huge fan on this trip of the AeroPress Go, which isn't getting enough press because it, it kind of came out right when the, you know, everybody stopped traveling, but the AeroPress Go is a travel version of the AeroPress. It's so ironic because I bought Lisa this and then COVID. Yeah. Well, you can't go anywhere. We haven't so, used it, but we have it. <laughs> I've, I've had it for months and I haven't used it till this trip. Yeah. But I have to say that now that I'm using it on this trip, it's brilliant. One of the things that people don't talk enough about is that if you're an American and you want to make coffee and you stay in Airbnbs as I do, and you go anywhere, all the cups in the world are tiny. Yeah. They're tiny little teacups. You can't use and the, so the AirPress. Press go, yeah. The thing that contains it is this pretty large cup which, you know, you- Oh, you, it, you it make it into thing. that thing. Oh. And then you drink right. out of this. I get this, this cup is twice as big as any other cup in this house. <laughs> and there, there's like 30 And it's on. smaller it's though a than a normal coffee mug. Because right. one of the things I didn't like about the AeroPress Go is it doesn't have as much capacity as the full right. size AeroPress. But, but but this is pretty good. It's this good is, enough. You know, the yeah. Size of a large mug, you know, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So that's, and then the last one is the YouTube one. So YouTube is addictive. They, they dangle all this stuff. They have the negative comments. They have all this stuff. There's an extension, a Chrome extension, also a Firefox extension called Improved Tube, which you can get on in the, all the places you get extensions. And you can literally turn off anything or anything. Uh, you can change the color. You can do all that stuff. But you can turn off the pitches. You can turn off the likes. You can turn off everything and anything. You can totally control what you see on YouTube uh, with this. It's been around for a while, but everybody loves it because you is can this really, it? really control Is it YouTube. improve YouTube or is it? Oh, it's, uh, oh, yeah, that's, that, okay, that is this it. is it. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they, they call it improve YouTube and improved tube. Yeah. I don't know. It's a terrible name. Yeah. But <laughs> I was looking at the new version, the beta testing version, but you can install the regular version. Yeah. Okay. If you have a problem with YouTube addiction, which a lot of people do, you, you go to the site and you get sucked into all the recommendations and stuff like that. You can turn, oh, you can just make all that stuff invisible and you'll never see it again. And it makes it a lot less uh, addictive and uh, less of a time sink. So I, I recommend that anybody who goes to the YouTube site on their browser that, they install this and customize what you see on YouTube. A improved tube. And, uh, you know, I saw when Hey came out with it, I thought, oh, I should maybe, because I, I did a trial, but I didn't buy Hey because it's 100 bucks a year. But now yeah. maybe, I, but you find it good for email? Oh, yeah, it's great for email. It's uh, for those people who are unfamiliar. I can't it's a use very my email. Interface. I just can't use email. It's, yeah. It's a well, mess. The, the, hey is great for that because you basically have to green light uh, everything that comes in. So you, if something comes in and it, they, if they've never emailed you before, you have to actually go and say, I want this. I right. don't want this. Right. Uh, I want this to go in this. So you folder. only get the mail you want. Them. Exactly. And so after using Hey for a while, you really get control of your inbox. And, and, and then when you direct things into different folders, you can see the folder as a single long page. Right. So, for example, if you, I, I do that for Google Alerts. So I, I want to look at those every three, four days or whatever. And I just go into that folder and it's just one page. I go through all the alerts just quickly. Mm. Uh, it's not it's not one thing that I close it and go to a next thing. It's just yeah, one yeah, long yeah. page with all the alerts. So you really save a lot of time and it's a great email do service. Do you really forward your old email addresses into it? Because now you have an at hey.com address, which I don't want. That's right. So what right. do you do? It, 
This is the problem that nobody talks about, about hate, hey, because if you send from hey, then the thing goes into hay, but it doesn't go into good. So you, if you're using both, if you're on the fence, it's not a good solution. Yeah. If you want to completely you have embrace to be all hay, in. it's a great solution. And if, if you want your own hay address, you're going to pay more. They charge a lot for ultra short email addresses and stuff like that. But yeah. you can't use it with anything else but hay.com, essentially. Right. And it's... That's uh, my problem. Yeah. It's not for everybody, for sure. But if people, you know... Most people are have a real problem with email. Yeah, it's interesting. They, 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 and I wanted to mention, because uh, I was a huge Posturus user back in the day. Yeah. And when they went out of business, I was very sad. But they went on to create something called Posthaven. It's at posthaven.com. Five bucks a month. They promise we'll never, because we're charging enough to keep it going forever, we will never stop. It would impost, it imported my old Posturus blogs that's cool. And uh, yeah, so uh, I don't use it anymore, but I used it for a long time as a replacement for Posturus. Mm. So if you've been thinking, well, what can I do? Posthaven.com. And I do love the Aeropresco. So, <laughs> so there. Jeff Jarvis, do you have a number? Um, I'm actually going to do a thing because Stacy's not here. Do a thing. So uh, a Kickstarter that actually worked for me. I just thought I'd mention it since I bought this. This is the Charge. Charge? This, charge. This is a 65-watt um, charger with two USB-Cs and one USB-A. Oh. I bought this before the um, pandemic because when traveling, I didn't want to carry around bricks and chargers and, 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 and converters. So just one. And um, it's it's magnificent. So I just bought two more. Boy, it's small. Again. And that's enough Very to charge small. a laptop? A laptop with my phone and something else every night I use it. And then the other beautiful thing, I didn't, the original one, I didn't get this um, but when I ordered it. It's 39 bucks. So it's a lot cheaper than yeah. an Apple or a Google. So here's your basic, you know, connector for foreign. Here's the, the, the plugs come down, right? So that's and the whole the plugs, charge. It's a wall it. wart. It just plugs into the wall. Okay. Plug it up, and then all you do is is uh, squeeze this oh, onto. Oh, it makes plugs. it international. Nice. And you got internationals because of those three. So it's really nice. And I thought a Kickstarter that actually worked, that actually delivered. I'm going to give them a plug. If you go to their site, oddly, the link from there to Amazon doesn't work. Just go to Amazon and search for charge, and you'll find it there, and you can buy it. A R A R G E. S instead of a C. Oh it's, man, it's I need Gan. that so bad. This is the that's why I, I did this tonight today for you, Mike. Yes, thank um, you. Yes, I need it. It's, this it's is perfect. that new it's gallium arsena, or, uh, gallium nitride uh, technology that lets you do much smaller chargers. They don't get as hot. It's really that's really cool. Yeah, that's this really is a nice. good idea. Oh, I want one. Very good. I like your pick. You could do that more often. You don't have to always do a number, Mister Ant Pruitt. Your pick. Uh, for me, I have uh, presets for Lightroom that I've been dabbling with and playing around with because over the pandemic, I found that I, when I shoot, certain styles come to mind and, and certain color tones come to mind whenever I shoot. And so I figured, you know what, I might as well just speed up my workflow and just create some presets. And when I started posting things on Instagram and mis mentioning that I use my presets people were like uh, you, you gonna publish these presets and i finally <laughs> got around to publishing the presets and they are on my website in this uh oh. my blog antpruitt.com slash blog and uh these presets are they are for lightroom but if you're a capture one user uh, they are in some instructions in the post that shows you how to import them into capture one as looks as well so here's the blog Scroll down. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Scroll down. It's like the next pro. So I'm sorry. There it is. Nope. That's, the. That's by the way, we should mention this. You're going yeah, to New Orleans to be given a workshop uh, October 10th through 14th at the Wanderer's Photographic Cultural Experience. Yeah. What will That's you be teaching? Be a lot of fun. I will be focusing more on street photography and Good. cityscape photography. Oh. So, and it's a hands-on event. Um, New Orleans you know, is small group, made so it's be pretty that. intimate. That'll be fun. And while and you're at ampruit.com slash blog, sign up for that, and then you can get the right below it. 
the presets, like the crazy morning preset. <laughs> Co cozy morning. Cozy. cozy. Morning. It looks crazy to me. Okay, cozy morning preset. Cozy morning. Cigar and whiskey preset. Cigar and whiskey. Oh, I like that. That's a nice look. That's nice. The biscuit preset. The biscuit. Preset. Named after your dog. <laughs> Aww. Aww. And, and I try to describe what the presets are doing because a lot of people will sell presets and, and say, you know, I, I call it toaster and yada, yada, yada. But yeah. they, they never really tell you what they're for. Yeah. So I try to describe what each of those presets are going to do to give you a good starting point for your image. It's not, a, not necessarily a finishing point, even though sometimes it can, but it gives you a good idea of what I'm working with and the direction nice. that I'm going with that particular image and hopefully nice. to help you out. Kind of stuff I, like I talk it. about on hands-on photography. Yay. Antpruitt.com slash blog. Check it out and uh, do sign up for Ants. If you're going to be in New Orleans in October or you want to be in New Orleans wanna in go. October. <laughs> it's a good time <laughs> of year to go to nice. New Orleans. It's too hot in the summer, but October would be very, yep, the humidity very down nice. There. Yeah, it's muggy. <laughs> muggy. Very cool. Uh, thank you, everybody. Great show. Lots yes. of fun. fun. Appreciate it. Don't forget, Mike is a gastronomad at heart. Of course, we mentioned mikeelgin.substack.com, but gastronomad.net is the place to go if you would like to travel and eat and enjoy. We're getting back up on the road. I can't wait. Yep. Uh, Halloween is coming, and that's when you're going to do for sure. By then, it'll all be A-OK -okay right. to go and do uh, the Day of the Dead in Oaxaca. Wow. That's that right. We have that room for one couple left, and this is the last time we're doing Day of the Dead. And Day of the Dead is crazy around here because everybody wants to be here for I Day of the Dead. This is the that. Day of the Dead epicenter of wow. Mexico. We're doing it once. So if you want to really have a unique, life-changing experience, then be that last person. <sighs> I'm sending this to Lisa right now. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to fight me off. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're trying to decide. We figure maybe by this fall we'll be able to do something. So yeah, yeah. I think I think it'll yeah. be great. Yeah. Oh man, I would love. We, to we have that. a we have a our own compound. Nobody else is there, so it's like very socially distant. Um, you know, I would so. love to do this, and I love that area. It's southern Mexico. Yeah. It's a beautiful so area. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Jeff Thank Jarvis you, is the director of the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark, Craig Newmark. Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. <laughs> Former TV Guide critic Frank Sinatra called him a bum. Buzzmachine.com at Jeff Jarvis. Writing a book called Moral Panic. No, Gutenberg. First, first, uh, the Gutenberg parenthesis, yes. Try Gutenberg parenthesis. Is, is it parenthesis or parentheses? Parenthesis. Sis. And I Just found one. out that in England, the parenthesis is what is included. In the United States, it's the brackets. Itself. Oh, yes. So they're saying the parenthesis is the contents what's of... What's inside, yes. What do they call these? The parenthesis? I, I guess so, or, or brackets. Brackets. And Americans Every call what's included, we call it a parenthetical expression, which doesn't necessarily need to be between parentheses. It could be between commas. <laughs> that's oh, right. And so oh, on. That's so right. We're just a much more evolved culture. I think so. Right. We've got it more sophisticated. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Stacy will be back next Always week. Back. I will not be back. So uh, Jason Howell will be hosting along with Jeff hey. and Aunt Pruitt. Ant is at twit.tv slash hop or antpruitt.com. Yep. Calm. When I'm not hitting the mic. <laughs> Bad mic. <laughs> Bad mic. Anyway, we thank you all for being here. We do this week in Google on a Wednesday afternoon around right about 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. If you want to watch us do it live, there, uh, just go to twit.tv, our website, twit.tv slash live. And there's audio streams there. There's video streams. You can pick a stream. You can watch. As you watch live, open up, pop open a little IRC window for our chat room at irc.twit.tv. So you can talk with the people who are also watching live. It's kind of a fun community experience. Uh, we also put on-demand versions of the show up on the website, twit.tv slash twig. Uh, you can also uh, get it from uh, YouTube. There's a YouTube 
channel devoted to This Week in Google. Or get your favorite podcast application, search for This Week in Google, and subscribe. That way, you know, you'll get it automatically the minute it's available of a Wednesday evening. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next week. Well, I won't, but they will on This Week in Google. Actually, two weeks from now, I will be just coming off my second shot that day. So I might be a, little, might be a little green two mm. weeks from the 14th. I'll no filter you. needed. See, yeah, right. I'll see you all then. <laughs> Bye-bye. You know what's fun? Android. You know what's even more fun, though? All about Android. That's my show, Jason Howell, along with my co-hosts, Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and we welcome guests on each and every week from throughout the Android ecosystem, developers, Googlers, journalists, people who are all geeked out about the Android operating system. We tell you everything you need to know. Twit.tv slash AAA every Tuesday. We'll see you there. <laughs>